next meeting to order for the city of San Juan today, February 24th, 2015 at 601. If we can rise for the invocation. Chief Gonzalez, can you lead us in an invocation? Yes, can we bow our heads? Uh, mm -hmm. Dear Lord, we've come before you this evening to continue making a decision for the city of San Juan. Uh, give us the wisdom, give us the strength to make the right decisions and uh, move the city forward. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Commissioner Garza, can you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You all may be seated. I'd like to first, uh, we have public comments, but before I get into the public comments, I want to address those that are here with the presentation on the architectural um, item. What I'm going to ask is that uh, I'm going to call up one by one, and I'm going to ask the others if they can wait for us in the library, and we will come and bring you one by one to come in. And I'm going to let you know that now, because that's what we're going to do um, uh, as soon as we get to your item. So if you can please do that. And then once we are ready to call, we'll call you and you can come in. We're going to give you five minutes on the presentation. And then we'll do about five minutes of questions from the commission. Thank you very much. And uh, Ms. Uh, Sassine or Ms. Ramirez, if you can uh, uh, escort them to the library. Thank you all very much. Under public comments, I'd like to call up. A, presentation by Valgo County Precinct 2 Commissioner Eddie Cantu related to proposed roadway projects within the city of San Juan and fun, funds Hidalgo County Precinct 2 and the Hidalgo County MPO will commit to these projects. Mayor, uh, Commissioners, uh, Commissioner Eddie Cantu uh, asked us to uh, table this item to further uh, review. All right. Is there a motion to, to table? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Um, Commissioner... Garza, all in favor, state aye. 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 Item is tabled. Item number two, presentation by First Southwest Financial Advisor of the City of San Juan to discuss the options, procedures, and methods of obtaining the city's required contribution for the Hidalgo County Precinct 2 proposed roadways project within the City of San Juan. Mayor Commissioners, uh, Mr. Chris Vela also recommended that uh, this item be tabled until further review when he's ready to present. Is there a motion to table? So moved. Moved by uh, Commissioner Swat. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, state aye. Aye. This motion uh, it is tabled. C presentation on proposed community school park project with PSJA. Mr. Ponce. Good evening, Mayor. Mayor Pro Tem, members of the commission. I want to do a brief presentation about a proposed a project with the PSJA school district. And this project. Uh, is going to be is being proposed to be done at Sorensen Elementary. Now this is the new Sorensen Elementary, which is um, off of Sam Houston Stewart Road. 
It's actually kind of a caddy corner to uh, Austin Junior High. And, and if you see here, this, this, there's a picture. Um, a, few, a, a few months ago, I met with uh, Dr. King, and he had mentioned about doing these types of collaborations, these types of partnerships. And this, this is one of the parks that he had mentioned. If you see uh, the pictures that are posted, uh, they have some, some mature trees that, that, that uh, are in place that they were able to salvage when they, when they did the construction. And, and, and talking about some ideas, he mentioned about possibly doing a park where we could build a small trail, about a little less than an acre and a half, a small walking trail, and maybe place exercise stations there. Now, this is a, a park that is also identified in our master plan as an area that is in need of, of, of parks. Uh, there's a community that, that resides uh, right adjacent to the school. Uh, and essentially, uh, what we, we would like to do is uh, go into this partnership uh, where they will obviously let us build on the land, and uh, they would help with the design of the, of, of the project. Um, and uh, we would essentially, and I'll give you just a, a kind of the blueprint here that we have. And it's, it is, I don't think it has a laser pointer, but it's actually in the top corner is where uh, that park actually would be. Um, as, you, as you're uh, passing through Sam Houston and, uh, and Stewart Road. Um, what does it measure? It's, uh, I think the area around is about an acre and a half, yeah, from, from what uh, I was provided, yes. And, and essentially, this is kind of a smaller project in, in, in scope. Um, the, uh, we're still looking at some budget items, uh, but we could possibly do the entire project between thirty and $40,000, and, that, and that's for the entirety of the project. Uh, which means that we're responsible for 50% in kind. A lot of it would probably would be uh, essentially uh, our labor, you know, and having our people, and of course the uh, 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 the, the possibility of having PSJ uh, help design uh, the project. And just some information on the grant. This is a, a grant through Texas Parks and Wildlife, and uh, this is a grant that we've actually gotten before. The deadline for the grant is March 30. It's March 31st of this year. And again, it is 50% it is, uh, in-kind that we match. Uh, we have up to three years to complete the project. And uh, this particular grant is one that's war uh, available every year. This is something we've gotten uh, in the past. Uh, we, we, build, uh, we, we did some uh, renovations at, at Municipal Park, the uh, Explorers Trail, uh, which is probably the most recent uh, grant that's been awarded uh, through uh, Texas Parks and Wildlife as far as what we've had. And again, uh, Lions Park and uh, WOW, which is part of the municipal. Uh, what we see, uh, the, the things that we need uh, for our application uh, is for the city to pass a resolution, obviously, uh, to, uh, for the park. We need to come up, we need to, uh, with P a, uh, in collaboration with PSJ, des uh, decide a city, uh, a name for the park. That's part of the application process. Uh, and the evidence of protection for Julian mining, there's, the environmental study has already been done there since the school is, 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 uh, re, is, was recently completed. So uh, meeting with Mr. Campos, the assistant superintendent for support services, uh, they also felt that this was probably the easiest project that we could do since it had just been built. They have the environmentals done. Uh, so it would be, uh, in, order, in order to expedite the grant process, the application process, this would be the easiest project that we could do as well. Uh, we would need a land lease and, of course, to turn in an itemized budget, which we're currently working on right now. Mr. Ponce, the, uh, I see the gate. Is that gate on the outside perimeter? Yes, it's on the outside perimeter. Okay. Yes, and there's yeah. actually an entrance there. Okay. And if you see that sign there, I had a better picture. That's with my iPhone. Uh, if you, that uh, picture, that sign there, they actually open up that area so people can go in and they can walk. And it's kind of, it's, there's posted hours there. Okay. And that's something that we would obviously what do. The hours? Uh, the hours, I believe, are after school. Uh, after school hours are open to a certain time. I think they're open to like eight. And, I, and, and don't quote me. That I need to. Be, it's been a while since I've seen the sign, but they have hours available after school. People can go and, you know, uh, they invite people to, to use that area. What about on the weekends and stuff like that? On the weekends, that I'm not certain. I don't. I don't recall at this moment. But it's. Uh, but the way that we would do it is we would have. Uh, it needs to be used more publicly than for the, from the school as far as hours. But of course. Um, that's going to be a given considering the fact that, you know, uh, the weekends and after uh, 4 o'clock it would be open. Uh, and in the morning as well, early in the morning. Under the item where you're, where you're talking about legal control of property via lease, uh, 
if that's the case, then wouldn't the city set the hours? Uh, well, we'll come to an agreement, but pretty much uh, there's like during school time, we couldn't use the park. That would make yeah. sense. Yeah, okay. during school time. Yeah, so it's pretty, it's pretty standard. Uh, like during school time, that would be the agreement. Summer would change, and and uh, we would essentially uh, we would present an, uh, the uh, land lease agreement to them, and of course they would have to agree. And these are some of the things that we would have to go into uh, negotiation and, and 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 come to that agreement, that understanding. I guess my one of my questions, the next question is for legal uh, counsel. It's my understanding that uh, as it pertains to parks, the school district really has no liability. Is that correct? Is that accurate? That's more or less accurate, yes. And then the city would also, we would fall under the same protection. protection. Yes. yes. And, any, and any liability that we would assume would be covered by our general yes. liability and coverage? Yes, and I have prepared a draft of a lease agreement for Mr. Ponce, and we talk about the indemnification. To the extent permitted by law, they would have to indemnify us and, and vice, vice versa. Vice versa. Yes, that's what we would do. Well, I, I think it's a great idea. One of the things that I've heard uh, from a lot of our citizens, particularly uh, those that live near schools, is the fact that uh, you know once the schools close, the park, particularly the uh, playscapes, are not available. Um, you know, and, and I and I use as an example, uh, you know, any of the campuses uh, where I've seen you know these beautiful playscapes that are surrounded by these eight-foot you know uh, chain link fences, and so I think that. You know, one of the things, number one, it's not open to the public, and number two, it's not even open to the children after school hours, which I think is a shame. Uh, but, but I think that this is, uh, this is, I mean, a great opportunity. One of the other things I was going to mention here, I see in the very center of the uh, plans, it says a brick building. Is that something that would be constructed or uh, no, something that is existing? I'm sorry, that's the, that's the existing building. That's the existing building you see. So and what is that? What is that building? That's the school. Oh, that's the actual school yeah, itself. That's the school itself. Okay. Yeah. So, are, is there going to be something separating the actual school building? There's a fence on the. There's a fence that actually separates that area uh, from the school. From the yeah, from the school. and from the drive so as well. A, there'll be a complete separation yeah. from the park and the school grounds, per se, because obviously it's all school grounds. But yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. What about lighting? Uh, we would have to add additional lighting. Also. Yeah, we would have to add uh, lighting as well. And is yeah. that part of the... Uh, that could be a part of the grant, yes. That could be a part of the grant that we could, that we could add, yes. The parking? Uh, that's one thing as far as parking. Uh, this, this is more like a neighborhood park. Pe essentially, it's, it's more designed for people from the neighborhood to come in. <clears throat> also, the idea was that uh, since Austin Junior High is adjacent, a lot of times parents, you know, waiting for their kids... Um, after school programs, athletics, that football stadium is going to go actually right across the street, the new, the new one at Austin. So that's kind of the idea. We don't have like a distinct, uh, designated sp uh, place for parking besides the parking that's existing in the area. And that's also something we could look at with the design of the park that we could uh, work with PSJ to identify, okay, what parking would be available for. Uh, an example would be Edinburgh has a park, a, sim a similar park, where uh, they use that, they use like their faculty staff parking, it's open uh, for uh, the general public to use as well. So that's something that we could also incorporate as well. And as you mentioned, there's that, that close off, that we, you know, there's that possibility where we could have an entrance from the parking area as well. Is the, um, that intersection chief, does that pose any problems with accidents? We have had uh, uh, several accidents during this year as well. I had one just recently where the lady led to fatality. Yes, and uh, actually uh, one of the major accidents was there. I think it was uh, with the kids that were riding in the back of the truck. Okay. So, I mean, because I know it's it, the traffic goes really fast. Mm -hmm. We're trying to encourage people to use the park, including children and parents and strollers and that kind of thing. I like to be able to see what kind of um, crosswalks and lighting, um, yeah. as we start to invite the public to cross our streets, what we can... Uh, look into to make it safe. Um, okay. Maybe the the timing and and the fact that it's in the corner. One of the things that I you know uh, see it being really a plush up is you know those kind of barriers that we have in our municipal park, those big posts. Yes. That's right. um, that that's something we might also look at for safety because of, of such big uh, intersection. Okay. And it's really closer to the grounds uh, on the street. 
um, check that. I don't know if, if um, that's something that can be determined or there's a qualification when you put those, but if that's something that we can get in the grant rather than later when an accident happens, um, maybe we can look into that. So there's really incredible lighting that um, they have over in Grapevine. It's the kind of lighting that goes on the floor, on oh, the yes. ground, and the light comes up. And so it, it gets lighted, but because it isn't a street intersection, but maybe extra lighting, uh, something like that I think makes it very aware and pedestrian friendly. Um, and that is a state road. I would definitely take note yeah. of that. Not only that, Mr. Ponce, I think that we need to look also into some sort of uh, uh, speed bumps or something that can slow down traffic in that area as well. Okay, I can definitely add, we can add that this, to this project. But the, uh, the state would allow, allow just yeah. because of the, um, the kind of, it's, you know, two elementary school. Yes. And we've got the junior. Right across it, yes. I think additionally with that, one of the things that we, we need to really consider is, um, and it's, it's something that's starting to be, uh, part and parcel for perimeter of parks that uh, abut to very busy uh, um, uh, uh, roads, and that is um, ballards with lights. And I don't know if you're familiar with the, but those are those metal poles. And then yes. They have a, the and the reason why is because they serve two purposes. Obviously, the lighting effect, because the light would go on top, but it also serves as, you know, as protection or a buffer between pedestrian and 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 uh, uh, automobile traffic. Um, I think if we could do those once they get to the intersection, um, I think that'd be good. But uh, having said all of that, I really think that just for your consideration that you consider at the very least putting a few uh, specifically designated parking spaces for this area, uh, that can maybe be at maybe at, at the, the main entrance of it. You know, one sure. of the things that I've noticed, particularly uh, with the, the city of McAllen hike and bike trails, they have trailheads, and each of these trailheads they have parking, but they don't have 15 parking spaces. You know, I mean, they have four or five. Why? Because they want to give the convenience, but they don't want to encourage, as you had mentioned, so much uh, vehicle traffic, more pedestrian traffic, but they also want to be able to allow for some. And I think that that might be helpful uh, as well. So maybe, you know, any you know, four parking spaces I think would be, um, you know, uh, would be good. Um, and then that could also be designated as the main entrance to this park area. Just for your consideration. Most definitely, most in definitely. The, in the design. And that was my purpose for the presentation, kind of get some feedback and you know, uh, uh, get what you would like to see. And obviously, um, from, your, from your perspective, what we could do to make this a possibility and uh, obviously to make it functional as well. Um, and just to kind of just show you, and I just added this, was uh, some of the uh, proposed exercise equipment. And you know, we've been looking at different uh, sites be uh, placed around the walking trail, like like kind of like stations where people can, well, as they go along, they could, uh, you know, do these uh, numbered exercises uh, stations. We'd have like essentially like a circuit that we would put. And uh, the good thing about about uh, these stations is that they're somewhat inexpensive. Uh, something like this package right here is like ten thousand dollars, and then uh, this package right here is between three and four. So we really have uh, some good number of choices to mix and match. Uh, where we can do something very productive for that size, for that size and, and scale of project, you know, for about you know eight to ten thousand dollars, you know, and do a nice. That's with installation fee. And we would do the installation. Oh. Our, our 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 staff could do this. The installation is pretty pretty simple, so we could do the installation. That would part of, be a part of our in kind. And it would have like a sign that shows you what to do at yes. The yes. stations. Yeah. Th these uh, this uh, outdoor exercise equipment. Uh, it comes with a sign that says, you know, gives you kind of general instructions. You know, what's the purpose of the exercise? Water fountain? Uh, that's actually something I had not thought of, but I would definitely add that. I would add that. Yeah, water fountain. <laughs> that's important, especially in Texas. <laughs> especially exactly. in August, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it's extremely good, and I, we've got a lot of property in the north side that we really need to tap into as well for, since we have uh, no parks. And that's something that uh, when I did meet with uh, with uh, PSJ, they, they did mention that they have about 70 acres of parks that they would like to work with in the future. We'd love to continue yeah. seeing that type of project. That's really good. Thank you, Mr. Ponce. Thank you. Any other questions for him? Uh, Thank when, you. When will we be, uh, when will you be bringing, because it did mention that we needed a resolution. Actually, I, I wanted to get some feedback. If you know, if you were, if were everybody was totally against it, then we wouldn't move forward. But if if you're okay with it, we would we would start moving forward. Uh, it would be at the next meeting. Very good. At the next meeting, and and actually we have to the 31st. Uh, we need to present uh, that land lease agreement to PSJ. They have to actually present it 
at one of their meetings, uh, and I've been working with Mr. Campos on, on expediting that, and then we would bring it forth to the city. And then uh, within that process, we would also have to try to come up with a name, which I know that under, uh, from my understanding, the advisory board committee also uh, does they that have their own nomination name. process. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we have to also work in collaboration with PSGA since it is on their land. Right. And it's something that would have to be done before the application. Uh, yes, that's a part of the, uh, part of the application. It has to have a name. Uh, the park has to be named. Now, of course, that doesn't say that we can't change the name afterwards. But uh, we we do have to go with the name uh, on the application. And I, I remember Mr. Uh, Hyman making a presentation on a ballpark and basically that because it's school district and school district property yes they reserve the right to do that reserve, yes that's so correct. i guess just start working uh, on that themselves as a presentation before them that that also be something to be considered yes and that's that's what we plan that's that's kind of the plan of action we're taking uh i'm going to go back and uh, speak to psj and let them know obviously uh the results of this meeting uh present them the land lease agreement see what uh, what their attorneys uh have to say and we're going to try to move forward i mean they're 100 percent uh, behind the project, and they want to they want to see it done. Very so, good. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And just because of the time constraints. Yes, it's, and, it's uh, flying by. We'll, we'll recommend that you know we start if if it has to be named, you know let's not not turn it in on time because we don't have a name. Let's start working on that immediately. Whatever it is that they're willing to be uh, able to, you know maybe a joint, you know where we appoint a couple and they appoint a couple and whatever name is selected, you know, I guess that's something that, let's not let that hurdle uh, keep us from making uh, making the deadline. Sure. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Ponce. Appreciate it. Under four, under six, contractual resolutions, a, a consider selection and authorizing the interim city manager to enter into contract for architectural design for the public safety building substation. I'd like to go ahead and just take them in the um, order in which they've been presented. And I'll allow every member of the commission to ask a question. Um, we've got five minutes that we're going to give them, and then five minutes for us to ask a question. The first is the Warren uh, Group Architects, Inc. Okay, did they? Yes, the next one would be Negrete and Kolar Architects. Good evening, how are you? Good evening. As we said, well, you have five minutes to make your presentation, and then we'll take approximately five minutes to ask any questions that the commission may want to address. We're set up. Um, my name is David Negrete, Negrete Color Architects, principal of the firm. Esteban Zamora, uh, intern at our office, and uh, Andres Mata, intern at our office here Welcome. In, in Edinburgh. The, uh, I think the, the thing for a public safety building that, uh, that we bring to the table for you is that we've had significant experience with all types of law enforcement facilities, both uh, police stations, police substations. Uh, there was a design award for the one we did in McAllen, in South McAllen, about eight or nine years ago. We have done two FBI facilities, Border Patrol, uh, ICE facilities, and uh, most recently, we're working on a DPS facility in Rio Grande City and um, are in the process of completing that. 
the, uh, these, these are basically our relevant projects of experience, the, the projects that we, that we just talked about, including a, uh, a district office for the Department of Public Safety in Bryan, Texas. Our work has stretched in law enforcement from Bryan down to Del Rio and down to Brownsville. We did the FBI field office in Brownsville as well as the one in, in Del Rio. And this is just, um, you've seen these in the, the um, qualification statement we submitted. The, um, the style of the, of the work was mandated basically by the uh, federal government in this case. They wanted it to, to fit into what their perspective was of Brownsville and Del Rio. And in fact, that's how we got the, the project. They liked what we had proposed for them. As you can tell, they were pretty similar. They're not exactly the same type of building, though. The one in, uh, in, in Del Rio also had a second contingent, and that is Custom Border Protection, that the, their law enforcement uh, part of it. The, on the left up there is the, uh, the McAllen Police Community Network Center that we did in South McAllen. All three of those photographs. And in Westlaco, we, uh, we transformed an existing an old existing uh, beer distribution facility, uh, upgraded it, strengthened it, and uh, even even uh, explosion proofed it at the front, and uh, transformed it into uh, uh, border patrol facilities for the Mid Valley. And uh, our first project was the uh, Edinburgh Police Station that we did about 11 years ago, maybe 12 years ago at this point in Edinburgh, and that's been that's been around for a while. The uh, the most recent one that we completed was a um, conversion of an of old existing concrete building in Harlingen, which is a, a GSA. It's called Office of Professional Responsibility, but basically it is an ICE internal investigation and law enforcement aspect that, that they deal with for their, all their law enforcement contingents up and down the border. The uh, Texas Department of Public Safety in Bryan, Texas, uh, is a big administrative uh, office in Bryan, as well as uh, an emergency management center for that area. And the one that we're finishing at this time in uh, Rio Grande City, uh, it's just north of Rio Grande City, but within the city limits, uh, is a criminal investigative division, as well as a, as a uh, driver's license uh, uh, issuance uh, type office. This one here is about 16,000 square feet. Basically, our approach to a project is to, is to bring your, your vision to a reality. You, you are the community. You're the ones that have the vision. You know what your needs are. Our, our role is to then take the verbalization and the written data that you give us to create the programming or to help you refine that programming and take it from there to, to uh, demonstrate to you the different opportunities that you might have on how a facility would be designed and what it would look like and, of course, how to budget it. And in all of that, it takes... Uh, it takes a qu quite a bit of, a, of a effort to go from vision to programming, then to uh, design and construction administration. You, you need a qualified contractor. You need a, a very good qualified uh, A&E team, uh, which we're, and our team is composed. We've got the same MEP engineer on this project that we've had on all our law enforcement projects, and that's half associates out of uh, McAllen, which is the most crucial uh, uh, consultant that, that we would need and a law enforcement project. The uh, construction administration aspect of the work is something that is of gr should be and is of great importance to every client and I'm sure to the city of San Juan, but we, are, we take that very seriously. We're very active. We, uh, all of us are, are site uh, people. In fact, I was on a site today. I'm not in a, not in a suit, but um, the, it is very cold out there. And um, I t we take a look at everything that, that is being done to uh, to ascertain whether it's complying with the documents and the, uh, the necessary requirements. <coughs> and that's it. Thank you. Our, our, I'd like to go ahead and open it up to the uh, commission for any questions. Mr. Greta, first of all, thank you for being here. Uh, uh, a very impressive uh, presentation. Uh, I was going to ask you a little bit about Los Encinos. Uh, tell me a little bit about the purpose of, of that facility and, and maybe uh, if you have some of, the, uh, some of the dimensions of that. It is an approximately 5,000 square foot facility. 
on a very tight corner lot. We had to get several variances. Even though it's a city facility, we assisted the city in getting variances for that, uh, the implementation of that building on a very tight lot. The, uh, the use of the building has uh, some patrolmen in a, in a small work area, and they do have a, a small holding room, uh, a break room, uh, offices for the supervisors. But more importantly, they have a large room that, that serves the, the surrounding community as well as serves as a place for a judge to, um, to dispense tickets and fines and all that type of thing so that the community members in that area can take care of their police business or their, their, their infraction business you know, uh, in, the, in an area close to them. For how many individuals that building designed as far as day-to-day -day work? I think something in the vicinity of about uh, 12 to 14. 12 to 14. Yeah. And 5,000 is sufficient for them? Oh yeah, the, uh, the one big space where we see the uh, that big room, uh, which is the Hassan Porch, that's also utilized by Parks and Recreation in the summer where they implement their programs. This building is adjacent to a city park, and so therefore it has more use than just law enforcement. Near like Las Palmas, it's uh, in Los Encinos. You go down on South Ware Road, and before right. we hit a uh, military highway, take a left on Idela. Oh, yeah. Way down there. Yeah. And uh, it's right there in the neighborhood by, I forget the, the name of the elementary school here. Sam Houston Elementary uh, from, from McCallum School District. And so, uh, as you can tell there, we also had an emergency generator, which, you know, is a very necessary thing And when you've got law enforcement. And it's, uh, it's a, a place where people can retreat to when, when they need to in, in emergency situations from the, from the uh, neighborhood. And so the, if you can see, we're right up against the edges of the street, and uh, all of that had to be variance away so we could fit the building there. The city didn't have any other property to put it on. Commissioner Suarez, do you have any questions? No. Commissioner Ramirez? No, ma'am. Commissioner Garza? Yes. Um, roughly how many uh, law enforcement buildings have you, you know? I think it's 11 or 12. 11 or 12? Point. Yeah. Our very first one was at the Edinburgh Police Station, and after that, um, have been the that whole list of buildings there. Yeah. We do have an assessment that has been made of the needs of the uh, police departments, um, and are you able to work with an assessment that you have not prepared? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. My next question is: as you're assessing the needs of a building. What do you? What would you, in your experience, uh, would recommend to be the foresight as to uh, capacity to look into the future five, ten years? What's realistic? Depending on your growth, we should always look at your statistics as to how you've grown. We all learn from uh, historical data that that we gather. So if you're if you're growing, let's say at five percent per year. Um, you're going to be at a, at a situation where if you're designing for today and you need 5,000, 10 years from now you're going to need uh, maybe 7,500 uh, feet or another facility. So the, um, depending on what type of property you have and how, where you're going to situate this, it can be designed to be expanded or it can be designed simply to be a standalone building and then you may want to program through an assessment process where other buildings may go into in the city. Uh, accessibility for your community uh, is very important, especially in this day and age where uh, more and more people find it difficult to have cars, to have vehicles, and we're moving more and more towards a little bit of more mass transportation. We have a bus system in the valley now that takes a, a lot of citizens back and forth. So um, I think that's something that, that as a society we should keep in mind, that we may not all have as many cars as we have now and the future, you know, or as much of the population. What do you believe to be the most important feature of a public safety building? The durability of its, of its uh, envelope, its shell construction, and its systems. Uh, I think the, you've got to have a, you've got to have a, syst uh, a building that is going to stand the test of time. That'll be, it's not going to be a, uh, something that's going to cost you a lot of money to maintain and to renovate and to constantly upgrade. We have to start with a, a baseline of durability. From there, obviously, responding to the program, to the assessment, is the, is, is the first clear and critical thing. But everyone forgets about that when they're, when they're in it, and you've got 
and there's roof leaks or water's coming in through the wall or under the wall, under the doors or what have you. And so, and then the, the actual wall materials, you may have to have hard, durable materials in some areas. Other areas probably could be done with, uh, with drywall. Um, but in, all in all, the, the uh, entire facility should have a public welcoming uh, feel to it where the public feels welcome there and not threatened. That, uh, that they feel like it's part of their community and not a place that they're being made to go to. Uh, have you ever designed a building um, um, in, in a modular fashion? And I don't know if, if, if I'm making myself clear by that, but have you ever designed a building, for example, that you knew we're going to build it this size uh, with the idea that this building will eventually grow? Uh, say, for example, <clears throat> you're going to build a 10,000 square foot building, but you know the ultimate product will eventually be a 30,000 square foot building. So you're bu have you ever designed a building that, you know, the, here's the product and you can open and you can go to work and operate out of this, but the ultimate goal is for it to be, you know, two or three times bigger? Yes, we have uh, the, the, starting with the police station, that was designed to be expanded. The, uh, it may it may require that they take down the old National Guard armory, but they would. That's more of a space issue right, rather it's than a space issue, your right. design issue or right. design. Rather. The um, the Wessico Border Patrol has master planned to be expanded. Uh, we designed it in such a manner where the corridor system will feed right into the expansion area, and uh, the uh, as they increase the number of officers that they would need, like we've seen in the newspapers. Whether that facility gets expanded or not, you know that's a, that's another matter. And then, of course, the of course the Rio Grande City DPS is master planned to be expanded. Uh, we've got the, the whole corner of a site where we can just add another module to it, depending on their needs for more law enforcement there. They have another section behind parking that they considered for a, um, a helipad, but. They it may end up just getting master plan to be a uh, a future expansion of of the building as well and, and a little bit more parking, but yeah that's very common I think you will see that m many firms are asked to to conceptualize and think how a facility can be added to in a most uh, non intrusive way, you know so that operations can continue and so that uh, the purpose of that building isn't hampered while in a future addition is undertaken. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Thank you. I would like now to um, Gignac and Associates, LLP. Yes, sir. Go ahead. You're welcome to wait, or we're going to go through the rest of the, the folks. Okay, sir, and, and we'll um, definitely be able to inform you by tomorrow or later this evening. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, you're, uh attention to all this and we know it's a very important project for you and uh, thank you thank you Good evening. Good evening. Um, just to uh, remind you, we have a five minutes for the presentation, and I'll open up for approximately five minutes from the commission for any questions. You may proceed. My name is Raymond Janak, Janak Associates, Juan Mujica, Charlie Garcia, and Ana Luzca. Uh, we have offices in Corpus Christi, Harlingen, and in McAllen. Um, in five minutes, I'm going to do my best to tell you that we have a lot of experience with public safety facilities, and we're currently working on uh, safety facilities as we speak. So with the limited amount of time, I'm going to go rapidly. This is, these are samples of our work and some of our consultants' work.
began in 1988, and I've told you a little bit about our, our uh, Susan Hahn here in McAllen. Uh, we do public work. This is a list of our city clients and a list of our school district clients, all in South Texas. This is a new police station we just completed in La Jolla ISD. Uh, Mark Graham is on our team. Mark Graham is a public safety consultant. He is probably the nation's most experienced public safety consultant. He works with us on police stations and fire stations. We're currently working with him on a police station and fire station complex in Eagle Pass. Um, I, he's not so I can brag on him. He probably is the most experienced police station designer in the United States. And here's our team organization. All our consultants are from the Valley except for Mark. And one of the things we do is we know how to phase projects. Uh, this is a campus in uh, Portland, Texas, outside of Corpus Christi, where we have a city hall, we have a police station, and then we phase the police station. On the left, you see images of our staff. What we will do is we'll come to San Juan, and we will work with the chief and the city council and whoever you want. We will literally design the school, I mean the, uh, the police station, in the room while y'all are there, so you can see why we did things and why we didn't do things. In other words, a, a, lot, of a lot of times we come, an architect will come back 30 days later and say, what do you think? And everybody goes, uh, I don't know. Well, why didn't you do that? Why? But if you're in the room with us, then we can get maximum input. It really works well on public safety facilities because we have input from detectives, we have input from police chief, we have input from the users. You know, do we have Sally Port? Do we need an evidence room? Are we going to have holding cells? All of those questions get in. And if we do have holding cells, do they need to be padded? Do they not? A lot of information. I'm trying to go quickly. But these are projects of cost control and some of our work. This is an annex for Cameron County in Harlingen on the left. This is a, we also did the McAllen Convention Center. And I just wanted to show you some budgets going from a million dollars to 57 million and how we feel responsible for the budgets. If we have a budget, we're going to work to the budget and meet the budget. That's part of what we think the architect's job is. Sustainable is prudent design. We like to have efficient mechanical systems. We like to introduce daylighting into our projects, uh, building orientation, and multi-purpose and collaboration spaces, like in lobbies. S certainly not in the police station, but uh, the lobby areas there. <coughs> Can we deliver? We're, we're a fairly uh, successful and aggressive firm. Can we deliver? This is a project uh, that had a tw that had a normal 21-month schedule. We were able to design it and get it built in 11 months. How big was that? Um, it was about a six million dollar job. It, what, real quickly, what I'll tell you what it was. It was a school that had been in, infiltrated with mold, and the school district had to get all the kids out, but they had to be back in 11 months, so we were able to do it that way. We had basically had to gut the, gut the school down to the steel. And these are some interior, th these are just interiors of some of the police stations we've done and GS Solutions has done. This is a Portland police station. Uh, this is a this is the uh, public safety complex we're currently working on in, in Eagle Pass. It's a fairly nice size uh, police station. Uh, to the right is a fire station. It's a, it, and they have shared facilities such as uh, well wellness facilities, uh, physical fitness, conference areas, and that sort of thing. In the center is where our detectives are. Uh, up at the top of up is the Sally Port with the holding cells and we have investigation rooms and evidence rooms and things like that. And I want to just quickly talk to you a little bit about our designs. We, we've done a lot of regional architecture, which is uh, what you see here. These are all in South Texas in the Valley and the, in Kingsville area. The one in the center middle is the McAllen Convention Center, which has been a big success for us. Um, on the right is Brownsville, on the left is Kingsville. And we also have contemporary projects. Um, the 
La Jolla police stations, the, the uh, police station in Portland, uh, La Jolla High School, and the annex for Nueces County. Here are just some more police station shots. The one on the lower right is a substation for uh, Hidalgo County in Westlicker. Which is your most recent project? Uh, La Jolla Police or, or the substation in uh, Hidalgo County. Um, and, but if you want to count recent, the one that's Eagle. being designed right now is Eagle Pass. How, how big is the one uh, in, in Hidalgo County? That was what? Hidalgo County uh, is about 10,000 square feet. It has, it's a holding cell. It has investigative officers. It's a substation for the, for the, for the sheriff. Uh, and this is really for the for the whole region on that uh, uh, precinct. Um, it has no, uh, four million. It was yeah, about four million dollars. Yeah, construction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does have a Sally Port. Uh, Sally Port holding cells. The 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 visitors obviously are secluded from all of the evidence areas, the interview rooms, and that sort of thing. And I did such a good job. I probably went faster than five <laughs> minutes. <laughs> But I thought I was nervous about staying within your schedule. No problem. Um, I'm going ahead and open it up to the commission. Commissioner Swan, any questions? Commissioner Ramirez, any questions? No. Commissioner uh, Mayor Patram Garza. Uh, one of the things that, that uh, I was interested in was the uh, substation. Oh, where, where did you say that was located? Westlake. It's in Westlake. I think it's mile. Um, you know the DPS, uh, it's, it's, it's sure. the one that takes you to uh, Las Flores. If you go further north, north of the DPS station, I think it's another mile and a half north. I don't remember the exact mile. Oh, from, from where, the, uh, on 1015? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, south of 1015, correct. It's a mile 12. Yeah, mile, mile 12, 12 yeah. and 1015? Mile 12, yes. Yeah. 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 And, that's, and you said that's 10,000 square feet? It's around there. I'm going up memory. It's been a... In, in designing that, what, for how many uh, staff members was that? Uh, Glad you asked that. Uh, the, the design process for that actually took us some time. We went through one sheriff, but we went through about four different captains, and then uh, several, uh, yeah, several detectives that came in and would talk to us. We went through the maintenance department, and we, I, that that has about six offices. That has at least three interview rooms. Uh, there's a conference room for them. There's a, a wellness center, like Raymond said. Uh, there's a, we had to come in with bulletproof glaze in the front for security purposes. Uh, and then we have the salad port holding cells. There's, there's four cells. Um, let me see, uh, I think that comprises, and then there's a big section for, for files, uh, record storage, and that sort of thing, yes. That's a pretty common size for a substation, yeah. about uh, 10,000 square yeah. feet. Some are a little bit smaller. City of Portland was about eight or nine, and then we've done some that are 12 or 13. One of the things that you mentioned also, and uh, I'll just get right back to it so I can point to it, but that you've designed, uh, I'm looking at, uh, it doesn't have a name, but this facility here, as you were going through your presentation, you had mentioned that that's Portland. that was master plan. That's city of Portland. That's Portland. Mm -hmm. City of Portland. One of the things that my question is 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 uh, you know in master plan you obviously you've you've got some experience in that but. Do you have ex experience uh, or ha have you uh, designed a building in a modular fashion? And what I mean by that is uh, when you build a facility uh, knowing and expecting that it will uh, either double or even maybe triple in size for example. Okay. Yes. Every, every facility, this is, the, this is what you were referring to. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Uh, every building that we design, we plan for future growth, whether it's unplanned future growth, if the client says, well, you know, I don't know what the next five or ten years holds for us, we still leave them an area or how, how it could grow, it does grow. You can um, actually see it here. I'm sorry, Raymond. You can actually see it here. There's room for growth right here. Right. There's room for more parking here, room for another building there. Mm -hmm. Then these are buildings that have actually been built, and there's room for in, in all directions. So, so we, take, we have to take them into consider, consideration early on. That's one of the most important things that we have to bring to you as the owner early on is, is master planning and what are your plans, current, what is current need, but what are your plans for the long range as well? And that's part of our role to come and do that. Let me further detail that answer. Is, and that is, okay, if we know that we're gonna, we're gonna build for 
for phase one and that there's going to be a phase two and a phase three, not only do you have to make sure where it's going to go, but you have to think through the what's called constructability, okay? How are we going to build it when it's going to be occupied by the fir first one folks, okay? A lot of people in some cases say, well, we're going to put it on top of a building. Well, I don't want to be working in a building where there construction cranes are on top of me. So you have to figure out not only where you're going to put the second phase and the third phase, but how are you going to build it? And how are you going to build it and keep the phase one people in business? Mm -hmm. John, do you have any questions? Yes. Uh, on the, uh, you brought it up as far as the input from the uh, inner chief. My question to you is, uh, how often would you meet with them? Is it list like once a week, or you know, or twice a week during the construction phase? Or? What, during the construction phase, we'll be here twice a week, whatever it takes. You know, when you're scraping, when you're scraping the earth and staking the building out, you know, there's not a whole lot of stuff for us to do for the contractor. But when you've got structural steel going up, and when you've got air conditioning systems going up, and electrical, we're going to be here two or three, four times a week, whatever it takes. Uh, but as far as meeting with the user, you know, we would sit down with whoever you designate, whether it's the city council, or the police chief, or whoever, and we would do a program and say, okay, what is going to go in this building? Is it going to have holding cells or not? If it is, how many holding cells? Is it going to have a sally port? You know, we create the recipe before you start cooking the dinner, okay? And then we would come back and s in, in this room or in the library or some room that you designate, we will spend a couple of days working with San Juan looking over our shoulder. And, you know, we work for a few hours. Folks can come in at lunch, or if the commission wants to come in after work, we'll have the product of the day up on the walls. You mentioned lunch again, and then you didn't mention <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. If I can follow up on there real quickly, though, uh, that's the early part of the, the, the phase, the design phase, we're talking to you, it's your needs, identifying those, and then putting them on paper. Once we get into the construction phase, it's very important that we're involved at that point because it's critical that the contractor understands, and they won't know it because they weren't involved early on. It's, that's where we come in, to make sure that whatever your intent is early on in the design process, that becomes a three-dimensional object uh, later. And so we keep communication with the contractor. We, we expect the uh, results from the contractor. We push him on everything from, from construction schedule, from being fair in, in pricing in case there's any revisions, uh, and making sure that everything's fair and coming back to you. And then we come back and report to the, to the commission whenever necessary to tell you the progress of the, of the project uh, as well. Obviously, we, we hope to be working for you because we think we have the experience and we have the, the what it takes to do on this facility. But whoever you, successful buildings, successful projects are those that have input from the owner. So it's not an architect's building. It's a, the architect was a conduit for the owner's needs. I do want to make you aware that we already have an assessment. Okay. We've invested in, in assessment being made that's been pretty thorough, and the uh, chief and his staff have worked um, worked with the uh, other firm that actually did the assessment. We have that available. Right. You'd be able to work with that, would you not? Of course, absolutely. Okay. Of course. absolutely. And I know that we've already had a few. Where is your local office? In McAllen, we're in the Curia Plaza on 10th and Nolana, just okay. south of Nolana. And in Harlingen, we're on uh, the Van Buren uh, the Bank of America building. Very good. And we, you touched on it briefly. My question to you is, um, in a public safety building, as we look into the planning phase and we talk about um, determining what would be the best dimension, size, square footage, if we also uh, want to be able to fit the folks who are there but also look into the future, how far uh, into the future would you consider for expansion before you decide, you know, it would just not be realistic to, to project further. What, what do you believe to be the, I, the best I think, measure? I think uh, five to ten years is realistic. I think beyond that, anybody's crystal ball gets a little fuzzy uh, because technology changes. Uh, not, you know, the, the, the way the police do their work changes because of the technology. I mean, I'm... I'm putting cars, I mean, I'm putting covers over cars uh, in, in Eagle Pass because the sunlight will damage the, the technology that's in the car that's worth $100,000, you know? And, and, I'm, and I'm saying, well, I didn't, we didn't really budget for the, 
for the canopies on the cars, but you know you have to because the technology that's in a police car today is so valuable. What would you consider to be the most important feature in a public safety building? Security. And what would that entitle? Security would be to make sure that there is no access unless you want people to access. And you can have access by some folks to this area, this area only. Let's say the chief w has access to everything. Uh, when When is it being accessed? Is it access? We want to make sure that the public access is, is only such that they only come to one place and there's no, there's no question as to where the public goes to. Uh, the, the, the less doors and windows you have, uh, in today's world we can secure windows, but because you know, it's a, it's a, we want to get some natural light into the building. We've, we know that, that the work experience is much better with natural light coming into the building. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate your input. Thank yes, you all. Appreciate uh, your time. I, yes, I didn't introduce your team. If you could, I did. Just for, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Is Juan Mujica, Jr. Charlie Garcia, I'm the architect in McAllen. Okay. Raymond Janak. And they, when they pronounce it, it's, it's like Janak, like cognac. You can remember <laughs> cognac. <laughs> I've had Gignac all my life. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you all coming in. Thank, Thank you, you very much. The next room would be and Garcia. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Thank you, Mayor. I do want to let you know that we have uh, five minutes for your presentation and then approximately five for the rest of the commission to ask questions. Okay, very well. Thank I you. I don't have a PDF or, I mean, uh, uh, That's fine. Okay, a USB. Uh, Mayor Sanchez, thank you, and commissioners. Sure. Uh, my name is Hector Garcia. I'm an architect and a partner with Mata Garcia Architects. And if you've looked at our brochure, I'm not going to repeat what's on there. I'm going to take a different approach and give you some information that may highlight some of the things or uh, amplify some of them. I know it goes without saying that you have spent as a commission uh, time and money in the past couple of years uh, researching and developing plans and budgets uh, for the facilities. And uh, <clears throat> you've asked the tough questions and whether you can go full force or if you need to scale back. I know you've approached both versions and, and how you may feel about that. The estimated costs that you've been given thus far are $250 a square foot for the, for the fire station. It was $411 a square foot for your police station. And most recently, uh, Mr. Gonzalez, you had quoted that roughly about $150 a square foot for a uh, substation. So in looking at all of that, you know, uh, I'm not here to quash dreams. I'm here to tell you that we can work with you and the budget that you have in achieving your dreams but it may have to take a different approach and, uh, than the standard one. 82% of my clients uh, come with very restricted means of money. So we have to find a way in which to achieve the goal that they have, which is uh, constructing a building, but a building that will serve them long term. Uh, just as there are 40 year buildings, there are 10 and 15 year buildings. I don't think that's what you want. So. Uh, with input from your community in both as, as the commission, uh, your city administration, and your community, your actual uh, constituents, uh, we arrive at a solution that will meet your current budget and your long-term needs. Okay. And so it's something that we deal with constantly, and, but yet it's something that we feel very comfortable in tackling that type of problem. We see it as an opportunity. So in order to meet your goals, there's three things that need to be done. Uh, you have the cost, which is your budget. You have the square footage, which is your program needs, your space needs. And then you have materials, which 
The materials, once again, the selection of the material will determine whether your building is a 10-year building or a 30, 40-year building. All of them are tied together, of course, and you can't do one without the other. However, you select two of those, and the majority of our clients select the square footage for their space needs and the budget. So I'm left with the third one. And so it's up to us then to come to you with out-of-the-box solutions that to present to you, will it meet the standard, will it meet the code, will it meet your expectations? And that way we can work together in arriving at something that's practical for both the, the community and also serve you long term. I wanted to um, talk to you roughly about the type of work in this sense of, of, um, that could fit your, your, your needs. Uh, we have several projects, and I'm going to refer to one, which is the Frank Roberts Elementary School in San Benito. Uh, the school district came to us and said, we need a brand new elementary school, but we don't have the money to build a brand new elementary school. What we did is we sat down and we master planned the entire elementary school as it would eventually look. Okay? And then we went back and cut it up into phases. And so each phase was programmed to the amount of money that they could budget over the years. It took 10 years and four phases to get the entire elementary school built. But yet, when you visit the master planned uh, school, it doesn't look like it was built over 10 years. Uh, so in the end, they got what they wanted, an entire school, but it had to be cut to the means that they had. And so um, the, um, what we did there was we stayed true to the master plan, and we stayed true to the materials that were readily available and not necessarily go off on a tangent and, and specify materials that uh, won't be produced or uh, that type of style or color in the, in the next few years. One of the pluses was that uh, as because of the phasing, there, there was a plus side to having to limit themselves, was that uh, as technic technological advances were made, that some of them uh, th those were incorporated into the new wing. So there was, uh, had we done the facility all at once, it would have to been a retrofit that they would have come back and done. But here, each wing was adapted to the current and, and uh, uh, technological advancements. So keep in mind that the result was what the client wanted. Uh, it contained all of their needs, and it was built on a budget that, that they could meet. It was just done over a period of 10 years and not one. So we accomplished the task, and we've done this many times. It's something we feel very comfortable with. Uh, if you can fund the entire facility immediately, I have sketch paper and everything in the car. I can start right now. <laughs> okay. If not, we can meet your standards and the way you operate. Uh, we have a total of 15 people, uh, two of them which live in San Juan, that are excited about the possibility of working with you. And uh, we've been here 34 years. And uh, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to address those now. Thank you. Commissioner Suarez, do you have any questions? Commissioner Ramirez? Uh, yes, ma'am. Go ahead. You list the city of San Juan as one of your clients. What policies do you do for the city? I would have to check with my partner. Uh, I don't know offhand. All right. Thank you, sir. Mayor Pro Tem? Um, <clears throat> but if, it could have been with the housing authority, because he does the, the, the vast majority of housing projects here in the valley. Uh, could you give me an example of uh, some um, public safety buildings that you've designed in the past and more specifically, do you have any uh, experience building um, uh, substations, for example, police it, substations? Uh, we've done the police stations uh, for the city of San Benito and the city of Mercedes. Uh, we've done uh, designs for substations, but they have not been funded uh, on that sense. You know. Um, We've also done uh, the um, emergency services facility for the county uh, that will be built up in Lin San Manuel and working with different agencies, uh, uh, the Texas Department of Highway, um, the, the county sheriff's office, multiple agencies that will be using this building, especially during uh, emergency situations. And so uh, working with all those agencies and tying it together, that could be considered a substation, but because it's a small community, that is their station. I'm, I'm familiar with a very good project. That's going to replace the one that the burned the power down. station that burned yeah. down. 
And how about uh, in as much as uh, experience uh, uh, building in a modular fashion where you, you design a building that's gonna be fully functional and standalone operational, but, but can be designed in such a way that you know, it, it will, it is designed to be built on and to, and to be expanded. Do you, have, you do have experience doing that? Yes, there are multiple. Uh, I have easily over 100 buildings that we've done that on, and that all goes back to master planning. Uh, if you know what you're doing and you, we can guide you get to, to plan ahead as to where you're going and what your community is as the explosion of population growth that you've had, uh, which is a nice problem to have in many respects. Uh, when you master plan, it's the, the, the placement of the facility that you don't put yourself in a corner uh, on the property, that you can grow uh, normally at least on three sides, that you can expand that way. And then also always uh, considering that uh, the placement of windows and so forth like that, that can be cut out and a quarter can be extended or a doorway can be extended. Absolutely, we have experience with that. Commissioner Goddard, do you have any questions? Uh, yes. First, uh, having input with the chief or the commission, do you, you know, are you this, We don't work alone. Okay. Uh, this is a team project. And um, if we were to be hired, the first ones to ask once uh, we would get notification is having a workshop. Uh, there would be a workshop for the city commission as to what your expectations are. But then we would have a workshop with city staff and what all the homework that's been done there and what they're expecting. And that would probably be more our day, day to day. But if you also have people who are on board already, your police chief, your fire chief, let's say, we speak to everyone that we are allowed to because I do have clients that say, no, it stops here and I'm the only one. I do have clients like that. But when you allow us to speak to everyone, it makes for a better building. And a lot of times, uh, you know, I ask to speak to people you might not think of. A janitor, for example, I ask to speak to. If anyone knows that building better than anyone else, it's the janitor. And so I don't look at, at, at the, the pay scale or it's, everyone is important and that there's a need for everyone to be able to speak <laughs> on the project. Now, um, Mr. Garcia, with the, um, on the building as we are looking, we already have an assessment that has been made and you were making some references to that. Um, and you talk about looking into the future. If we were to build something and without having to do additions, what kind of time frame do you build for, and which is, would be logical? If we're looking at growth, how much would you build the building uh, oh, okay. into the future? That is practical, mm -hmm. no more than 10 years. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you believe would be the most important feature on a safety public building? That we would determine with you, but if, if I was looking at it and, you, and, and to respond to your question directly, the most important feature would be that it is a building that you will be able to maintain. Uh, there is no need to provide materials that you're gonna have to be uh, spending money on yearly uh, to, to maintain uh, when it could be something that you don't have to look at but maybe every five years, 10 years. Uh, the selection of the air conditioning and mechanical systems like that, something that you can be able to maintain and that you have the personnel on staff that can maintain that. Because uh, some of these systems are not getting so complex that it really requires an engineering degree to be able to run some of them. So basically, keeping it simple, keeping it practical. But it doesn't have to be boring. You know, uh, mind you that this is a public facility that the will represent the community uh, to those coming in from the outside and for yourselves. And it's, it's what you approve during your watch. So it has to meet a certain level of the uh, the aesthetic of what the police station or, uh, slash fire station slash municipal court would be. It should represent the community as a whole, but it has to represent your, your uh, financial capabilities as well. As you, as you make your final uh, presentation, mm -hmm. uh, once let's say the design is made, we look at the cost per square foot, would you also be able to give a fair assessment as what it would cost, uh, the, the fixed, um, fixed cost of running, having that building up and running that we would look at on a... Uh, your, your, like your yearly electrical cost. Electrical, and, and, yes. everything we else. We project things like that, okay. absolutely, because uh, once again, I would hate to have you design, uh, come up with a facility 
which would not be a surprise to you because we would design it together. But in the end, to have a facility that you cannot afford. Um, I'll give an example of the, um, the, um, the partnership, I think it's called now the Rio Grande Valley Partnership that uh, used to be the Valley Chamber of Commerce. They had a building designed in Westaco uh, that cost them a certain amount and so forth. Uh, they were in that facility about two, three years, and then they determined that they could not afford to continue being in that facility. And so then they moved to much smaller uh, uh, quarters and they sold that one. That to me is a complete failure on the part of the architect and the client of not being able to project and, and living above your means. And we're not here for that. Appreciate that. Thank you, sir. Anytime. Thank you for your, for your time. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, PBK Civic Government. Good evening. Just to recap, you have five minutes, uh, approximately five minutes for the presentation, and then we'll take some time for uh, questions from the commission, approximately five minutes as well. like to start working off of the book that we do have? It's a little bit different. It's, okay. it's geared a little bit more, but I promise it's on there. <laughs> Try closing it, maybe. Go ahead. Good evening. Good evening. Um, my name is Ila Alvarado. Um, I'm an associate principal with PBK Architects. And uh, I'm here to give you just a quick presentation on our, our qualifications for public safety buildings. With me today, I've got Chris Sias. He's our project manager. And Jose Guerrero is our construction administrator. <coughs> uh, we do have 
Uh, our consultants, we did not bring them today, but we do have a team uh, should we be selected. Uh, if not, uh, we are available to work with any people that you've currently worked with and are happy with. We're not here to reinvent the wheel, uh, but we do work closely with some people. Uh, just a quick uh, overview of PBK. We're founded in 1981, corporate offices in Houston. Uh, I'm in, I run the Valley office here in McAllen. Been here for the last eight years, came back home. We've got uh, six offices throughout the state, so, so something that benefits us. We're over 300 employees, and so um, if we ever need help with any one of the offices, we share that. We have an, what we call um, an office with no walls. Uh, and so with that also we track construction costs from North Texas, Central Texas, South Texas, and throughout the state. Expertise, uh, we've done over 50 projects um, uh, municipal for, muni for municipalities, uh, one couple of recognition and publicities. <coughs> we offer all in-house services uh, from civil engineering, structural, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, and, and um, technology as well. Our culture, uh, one thing that we feel that separates us apart from any other firm is our obsessive client service. I would ask that uh, we have some references there. Uh, should you call any one of their references, uh, they will be have nothing to say but great things about us. Uh, we have a partnership with KCI. Again, KCI Technologies is a engineering consulting group uh, strictly for security and uh, safety. And so we do partner with them on several of one of our projects and they are part of our, our team as well. Um, again, we go over infrastructure, crisis communication, staffing, and any procedures that need to be placed and take place uh, during the design. Uh, we do go over some challenges. Um, again, access control, who's entering, uh, what areas that they're, that they're entering the facility from. And then again, we go over any solutions that may be, that may be pertinent to, to, to you or the end user. Uh, currently, uh, under construction that we have right now is a new police station and fire station for the city of Progreso. Um, so that is scheduled to be complete here uh, by the end of July, and um, so that is under construction right now. Um, for South Texas College, we've uh, renovated uh, the shopping uh, center there just south of South Texas College on Pecan Boulevard. So we did their new police station, and then there you can see the dispatch room with over 50 TVs, 40 TVs, um, and so that's geared for the not just the McAllen campus, but all the campuses throughout the, uh, the Rio Grande Valley, all the five campuses. Um, fire Training Center at Tarrant College. Again, this is just a training center for the fire department um, and again, the public safety buildings. And then in Conroe as well, uh, with the school district, uh, we were able to get together with them and establish a police headquarters for the entire school district. Uh, so we are aware, again, working with the schools also, that which we do, making sure that the police station has every single floor plan so they have complete access. And now that we're using uh, 3D modeling, they have the infrastructure to look at all those 3D images and, and that model. So anybody who has access to it, should they have a situation, they can upload it and get a SWAT team together for that. Uh, Montgomery uh, County Hospital District, again, just, just another fire department uh, with them. Uh, they, they do have quite a bit uh, there at the Dallas area, so we did some work there for them as well. And then with KCI, uh, City of Santa Fe, uh, City of LaPorte, uh, Virginia and as well as the city of Houston. So our knowledge and our expertise throughout this um, extends throughout uh, outside of Texas as well, but we will be concentrating here locally. And with that, I will say thank you and open up to any questions that you may have. Thank you very much. Commissioner Suarez, questions? On 10th and Olana, on the BBVA compass, we're on the eighth floor. So we're literally not even 10 minutes away. Commissioner Ramirez. Um, Mayor uh, welcome and thank you uh, for being here tonight and presenting, uh, uh, Mr. Alvarado. Uh, one of the questions that I've that I've been asking of, of all the presenters tonight um, is is their experience, particularly in building uh, police substations. Um, do you have some examples uh, that I might know? Um, I would say might recognize uh, locally here. Yeah, uh, I would say. Uh, get under construction right now, we have the City of Progreso, so we're doing okay. a police station and fire station uh, for the South Texas College. Uh, even though it's in a shopping center, we had to make special provisions, till wall construction, put in a bulletproof wall from floor to ceiling out there in the front of the lobby. I guess on, on, on that is, you know, I'm specifically referring to substations, how, about how many square feet, and understanding the size of the community of Progreso, that may, 
you know, even though it may be a full operating uh, 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 facility, it may right. have the characteristics of a substation because right. they, of they the size do. of the community. Correct. Theirs is about 10,500 square feet. Uh, and for about how many people is that building? And by people, I mean staff. Staff, I would say 20 people. I would say up to 20 people. It's about a $2 million project uh, for South Texas College. That was 7,500 square feet. Um, and, and again, that one is mostly for the, for the police headquarters. And in there, they have 15, 15 staff that are constantly running through there. So I, I would think those two are the most recent examples that, that we have here locally. As far as in your in, in building, uh, do you have experience in, in uh, building modularly? What I mean, what I mean to say is, is that uh, you make the building uh, a freestanding operational building. Correct. But but to be able to be uh, master plan and designed to eventually grow into a two or three times. Correct. One, one of the things that, that we offer um, with our services, we do a long long range facility planning, master master planning as well. So when we meet with the end user, we call what we do a charrette process, and so we gather everybody in together. It's a full blown two day um, study, and what we would do is we would invite you or anybody to come in, tell us a little bit about it, what we're looking for, and we adjourn probably at the end of the day while you all go home and sleep and all that other fun stuff. We stay working on this model, and it's a 3D model that we come back to you the next morning, present to you, give you several options, put it in a room like this, and then look at the pros, the cons, what the goals are. And again, if, if future growth is one, of your, is one of the things that you want to do, then absolutely, we will design it to where we can grow, where the capacity can go from you know, so many square footage to additional, whether it's on the jail side, on the fire department side, or on the administrative side as well, or maybe to even enclose a office like this. I know that there's some that we do a multi-purpose room where it can serve as a training center, and then also when a judge comes in, they can do, um, you know, host uh, a small court there in session uh, if needed. So, yes, sir, we do go over every one of those items, and if we need to make arrangements to expand that complex, then we will do that as well. Do you have any questions? No, we already okay. I have a question. In a space of 3,500 feet, how many people do you think in this type of um, work as a police station would fit appropriately? Per, per the code, it is Mr. <laughs> Office, jail. We have how many? How many do we have, Chief? We have uh, 12 or uh, 8 cells. 8 cells. 3,500 square feet. And they're 8 by 8, 8 by 10 cells, and roughly. A little bit larger for the handicap one. So 1, 2, 3, 8, 12, 15, probably about 20 to 25, I would imagine. Yes, ma'am. My question is, if we are building into the future, um, how many years do you look into building at the uh, to be able to invest money and to be a good investment to last us how much into the future? How many square feet would you look at? Not square feet. I already have that in my mind. How many years would you be looking to recommend to us? By the um, way, we do have an assessment already made. You do have an assessment already made? Yes, we do. Okay, then what we would do is probably take that assessment, look into your, uh, look at the demographics, look at how you're planning to utilize the space. Um, I would say within two to three years, we try to come back and reevaluate that just to make sure that what you were uh, initially the use for that facility, are you still meeting that? Um, if you're housing, um, you know, any any um, anybody in the cells, is it just for a holding cell? Do they get transported directly to county, or how long is the average stay for an inmate uh, to be here? Uh, if you have a canine unit, then as well, you know, are we making provisions for them as well? And so we'll look at each one of those components uh, to make sure what the processing, how long does it take to process somebody, run them through the, through, through the uh, channels there to get in um, and, and, and move along that way. But I would say probably two to three years to make sure that your goals are still being met. Then there you can go on every five to 10 years after there afterwards. Now when you provide a final product, a cost estimation, do you also uh, provide an assessment as to what it would take to have that building running 
up and running on a yearly basis? Yes, ma'am. Um, I guess that's what we do as offices throughout the state of Texas. We look at trends, so we're able to see, again, I would tell you that it's less expensive to build down here in the valley than it is San Antonio, Austin, Dallas, and, and in Houston. And so we do track those costs. <coughs> Even with our recent projects that we have, we look at that and we, we try to gauge, try to be above that curve to see, okay, this is what it's going to cost amount of this so much square footage, are we going for any grants, are we partnering up with any energy companies locally here that, you know, again, we're designing a state-of-the-art facility, so the lighting is going to be very important and making sure that we're saving energy and then bringing that back to the lighting people and hopefully get some savings to get back that back to the community. And you'll well. be able to give an estimation as yes, to keep this building running. Correct. You would invest, you would have to pay this much every, it would be a cost of this much. We, we would we would have to look at exactly who's who's occupying the space, what it's going to be its intended use for, is it going to be from the hours of 8 to 5, and then a certain portion of it is obviously going to be run <laughs> 24 hours a day, then yes, ma'am, we will look at all that data. Very good. And what do you believe to be the most important feature in, in a public safety building? I would say um, meeting with the end user to make sure that what they're looking, what they need, that we're meeting their, their needs first and foremost. And then again, going through each department, making sure that we sit down with them, go over again what their goals are, making sure that we meet those to the fullest extent. And again, that's part of what we offer our obsessive client service that we will not stop and uh, we don't nickel and dime you once you hire us, it's going to be for the remainder of what that means coming here on a daily basis or coming here as, as often as you need us to, to make sure that at the end of the day you're satisfied with the end product. We will do that. Very good. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next is Felcrum Consulting Services. Good evening. You have approximately five minutes, and then we would take about five minutes from the commission or so to uh, Can you give us ask just any a questions. To set up sure, go ahead. Good evening, uh, Madam Mayor, Commissioners, staff. Uh, Fulcrum Consulting Engineering Services appreciates the opportunity of being here with you this evening to tell us a little bit about our company. Fulcrum Consulting Services is a fairly young company. We actually started in uh, 2010, but we've been doing this type of work for many, many years. We are actually a spin-off a Fulcrum Consulting, I mean, a Fontaine Consulting Services. And uh, personally, I was their Texas Operations Manager since 1992. When Mr. Fontaine retired at the age of 80 in 2010, then the staff, through a buyout process, bought, bought out his existing contracts, and we fo formed Fulcrum Consulting Services. <coughs> Would you change it to the next? We are a specialized uh, company. We provide not just engineering services, uh, but we also provide architectural services. And we're a full service company. When we first commenced uh, operating as Fulcrum Consulting Service in 2010, we were probably about the only company south of San Antonio that had all the in-house resources to be able to take on almost any challenging project 
in the South Texas area. We service South Texas as far, and the whole state of Texas. We specialize in every item that you see here from <coughs> water treatment, water distribution, water, wastewater treatment. We, we do wastewater collection, gravity. We do wastewater collection vacuum. We, are the, we actually put in the biggest vacuum sewer system in the world in Orange, Texas and completed that in, in 2012 and we're now going through an expansion, a $21 million expansion on that system. We do textile roadway design, of course architectural design. We do all types of federal and state permitting from wastewater treatment facilities to landfills. We, we help communities remain in regulatory compliance with TCEQ and EPA. We do land development, in-house surveying. We're also drainage system and flood control specialists. We are mechanical, we, we provide our own mechanical, electrical, and plumbing services that are, would be required, like the project you are planning, all in-house. We do environmental assessment and solid waste engineering. One of the things that helps Spoken Consulting Services is that we are actually federal and state funding acquisition specialists. I am a former appointee from President Clinton from the early 1990s, and I was assigned to a team that evaluated the quickest process to bring funding to, to South Texas. And being in that engineering committee, I was able to work with clients like Military Highway Supply Corporation to bring down over $200 million as part of Colonia monies that provided wastewater service to every Colonia from Brownsville all the way down to South Apar along Military Highway. And eventually monies to upgrade their water systems to uh, reverse osmosis quality. Uh, as far as our key personnel that typically gets assigned to a project like the one that San Juan is planning to undertake, I, I am Georgie Lacero. I'm general manager and project development specialist. I am also principal in this company. I hold a BS in mechanical engineering, registered as a civil engineer. I also hold a master's in business administration. My partner, Daniel Campos, PE, he is a former PSJ Bear, graduated UT PA. He is, he is a mechanical engineer and he is senior project engineer. So he does a lot of the MEP work that would be required in a project like this. We also have an in-house code and quality control construction inspector. His name is Armando Prado. He is actually a certified building inspector and code compliance specialist. Gustavo Rea Jr. is also a principal in our company. He is one of our young engineers, uh, late 20s, early 30s. He's a graduate engineer and a project manager. Even though he's very young, he's worked for me for the last 10 years. He is a graduate of the University of Texas in San Antonio. Raul Izquierdo, also civil graduate project engineer. These two folks are getting ready to become registered PEs in our company and will eventually uh, Gustavo is already a partner, so we will be the next one in line. Uh, Curtis Morton is our lead architect. He couldn't be here tonight. Uh, Curtis is actually uh, a new dad, and because of it, it prevented him from being here tonight, but uh, he would be our lead architect on a project should we be selected. And then we have Joey Zaguirre, who sit, who's here next to me. He's also one of our junior architects and is very close to becoming a registered architect as well as an attorney. This is only a part of the personnel that we have at Fulcrum Consulting Services. We are housed out of La Feria, Texas. We have approximately 15 uh, per, uh, persons that work for us on a day-to-day -day basis and within with that, those 15 persons we serve as the whole state of Texas. Uh, some of the projects that we have recently worked on and that we feel may be somewhat applicable to what you're working on is the City of Port Isabel Civic Center and Emergency Operations Center. It's a, it, that's, that was a 15,000 square foot facility that cost about $5 million funded by USDA Rural Development. Uh, when you go through Port Isabel and into uh, South Padre, right before you hit the Queen Isabella on the south side of, of Highway 100, we have this new building. As part of that building, we have an emergency operations center that sits at this location. Uh, Falcon Consulting Services was involved in the design of that facility. 
It, it provides state-of-the-art uh, facilities that will help to, to man uh, legal authorities and, and law authorities uh, during and after a big uh, storm event. Also, about a minute, sir. Hmm? Yeah, about a minute. About a minute? Yes, sir. Okay, also, in, it, we, we, we did a similar facility, military highway, 1,000 square feet, 1.3 million. In the city of Peñitas, we also have, we work firstly working on the city hall and public safety building, 15,000 square feet, cost of 4.3. It's a city hall and police department. And along with that, we also do high school work throughout the whole state of Texas. This is a new facility that's just been funded, and we're going to start construction on it in the fall for the little community Santa Maria, located in Cameron County. I think that's about takes up my five minutes, and, and that's what I have. Uh, you know, and I'm, I'd be glad to answer. Any sure, and, and I will go ahead and, and ask the commission at this time if they have any questions. Commissioner uh, Suarez, Commissioner Ramirez, oh, uh, com Mayor Pro Tem. <clears throat> uh, one of the questions, and, and to be fair, I've been asking this of yes, of all the firms: is uh, do you have experience uh, <coughs> specifically designing substations, police substations? As a matter of fact, this is an item that has a lot of interest to me and, and it deep, sits down deep in my heart, Mr. Garza, because as a very young man, I thought that I was gonna actually pursue a career in law enforcement. So I was involved in the police end and also growing up, I, I, I was able to participate in the, in the volunteer fire department for the city of La Feria growing up. So therefore, I know of the needs that, that facilities like that need. We've, we've, I've worked on several of, of, of facilities requiring that over the last 22 years. And uh, the RFQ, I think, that we presented shows that, but we do have that experience to be able to meet the challenges of this assignment should Fulcrum Consulting Services be selected. Additionally, um, um, do you have experience uh, building a, a modular league which uh, by that I mean to say, uh, if we were to build, for example, a 10,000 square foot building, uh, would, would, do you have the experience to be able to design that uh, in, a, in such a way that it could very easily uh, be, be built up or expanded um, you know, to maybe a 20 or 30,000 square foot? I'm glad you asked that because I, even though I have time in my five minute presentation, the city of Peñitas is set up in that manner. We actually went through different modelings after conducting a needs assessment of the community and coming up with a design that would be actually suit the committee and um, the community and actually fit the economic situation of the community. Uh, community. Uh, the way that it's set up now, City Hall and, pol and, and the police department is what we're calling phase one. Phase two is gonna be, is gonna involve an expansion of the police department and also bringing in a fire department. In every one of those spaces, in our office, we use a special software called Revit that will create 3D dimensional uh, uh, pictures of the way that the facility will end up being from stage one, stage two, and finally the final stage of the project. So yes, yes sir, we, we have that experience and we have that ability to be able to do that for the city. Commissioner Garza. How much involvement do you have with the uh, when you're designing these certain buildings with the commission or chief or you know staff? Uh, typically, the way that we approach a, a problem like the one that we would like to undertake for the city is that that is the key: getting get getting the police chief, getting the fire chief and staff together so that we can conduct the necessary interviews to allow us. To determine exactly what they, what the needs are for, for their personnel, and it allows us to go back and evaluate that, and come back with preliminary schematics that help to address that, and eventually follow up with a, a thorough workshop with the commission, with the city manager, and with additional personnel. Show them this is option A, option B, or option C, and this are, is a recommendation showing all the pros and cons to the, to the different scenarios that we have developed. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
what would you uh, state if we were looking into in building something that would take us a, a building that would take us into the into the future, not built for the needs of right now? How far into the future would you uh, recommend that we look at a building? Typically, in the facilities that Fulcrum has been involved, we we come back and we look at the actual growth of the community. 20 years prior to where we're at now and look at the projection, the population projections that'll take us into the next 20 years. Depending on the funding source that the city intends to use, if it's not private funds, typically part of our feasibility study is to look at that in order to justify the size of the facility. So a minimum of 20 years would be what we would look at and consider as part of moving forward with a design <coughs> For your community we've already invested in an assessment yes ma'am and um, that is something that you would be able to work off you would not be requesting another assessment be made okay. is that correct you'd be able to work with somebody else's oh I, I i would okay. I, and, and uh you know mo most clients aren't to that point mm -hmm. but any 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 assessment that you may have we will take that on and review it and you know and, and again it'd be a, a a situation where we would communicate should we see that there may be an improvement or two? But typically, the, any additional assessments would be standard fee and no additional cost will be done should you already have that in place. Good. The, um, my other question is, if we have, when you come up with a evaluation or a, a recommendation as to the amount of square footage and the cost, do you also include the assessment as to what it would, uh, projection, what it would take to keep the building running year after year and what we would part, have to part, part of a complete feasibility <coughs> study would be not just the cost mm -hmm. but the actual operation and maintenance and short-lived asset schedule so that you could program the necessary fun funds to be able to replace your say your air conditioner at year seven or year 10 lights uh, and, and different components so yes we would provide you one of those schedules as part of the of, of the design so that in the end it provides a clear picture to the project owner as to how much more money would have to be invested into this facility to keep it at a point where it's going to you're going to be able to utilize it for that 20 year plan in a space of 3500 square feet with eight jail cells how many people do you would you um, estimate rough estimate as to how many people that would uh, facilitate okay on uh, 35,000 square feet with eight jail cells in a building. 35,000 square feet. 30, 3,500, I'm sorry, 3,500. Oh, okay. 35 would probably be the Pentagon, huh? Okay, there, right now the, the Military Highway Water Supply Corporation is a 10,000 square foot facility that could be used as a, as a, uh, uh, as something real similar to a public facility. That 10,000 square foot facility houses about 50 persons. So you divide that by by uh, maybe twenty by three, twenty five. You're talking anywhere between between maybe fifteen to twenty five persons, depending on how you lay out that that, that facility. Very good. And uh, what do you believe is the most important feature in a public in a safe public safety building? Well, a lot of it has to do with the emphasis of security, especially with our close proximity to the border. <laughs> it's very important that we take that concept into operation. Our lead architect has the experience to be able to evaluate and make the necessary recommendations to be able to meet that need. Very good, thank you very much, sir. Appreciate thank that. Thank you very much. You all have a great evening, and I appreciate you all giving Fulcrum the opportunity to be here tonight. And thank you for we coming. Look, we look forward to the opportunity of working with you should we be selected. Thank you, sir, appreciate thank it. You. Next is GMS Architects. Good evening. 
I'd like to go ahead and, and tell you, remind you, if you didn't hear it at the beginning, we've got a five minutes for the presentation, and then we're going to open up to the commission for any follow-up questions. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Rudy Gomez, and this is my partner, Rowan Gomez, my son. We are GMS Architects, and with us is Guillermo Quintanilla from Ethos Engineering and Miguel Chanin, our structural engineer. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you for giving us the opportunity to come in and make the presentation. And if you have any questions at any time, we'd be pleased if you'd Thank ask. you. <clears throat> Excuse me. You know, all the firms that you're interviewing are good firms, but I think we're in a position to serve you best. Um, first question is, well, who are we? Well, we're an architectural engineering firm that has practiced in the Valley since 1976. So we're, we're in a situation where uh, we're very familiar with the, the design and, and the conditions here in San Juan. Uh, we worked for almost 15 years for doing the architectural work for PSJ. We also did the idea schools here in San Juan. Uh, we have a staff of nine people in our office. Ethos has six. Chanin has eight. We also have a resident inspector, uh, Ray Sanchez, who brings with us almost 30 years of construction experience. And although we office in Brownsville, uh, Ethos is in Harlingen. Miguel's in, in McAllen. Uh, we're currently doing work in Mission. We have several jobs for the Mission, uh, in Mission. Um, we're working in Mercedes. We're doing South Texas and Mercedes school work. And we're doing work up at Nelson. Uh, and this, this group, that you, these are the people who will actually be doing the work. And this is not something that's a matter of convenience because we work together on many jobs. Uh, I think the greatest service that we can provide you is providing you with a good cost-effective solution. In the last six years, we've had two projects out of the money that we had to go back and rebid. And I think this is, uh, uh, when you look at the extensive bidding experience that we've had, we're in a position to show you or tell you how, what kind of project you can get. Uh, what we'd like to do is show you some examples of our work. We did the, uh, the DPS station in Brownsville. Um, 6,200 square feet cost a million four, and that's principally because of all the equipment that goes in, went inside. We would work with Major Garza, who I believe is originally from San Juan, and uh, uh, it has all the bells and whistles that the DPS requires. The, uh, the next building is, uh, we did two police substations for the city of Brownsville, when Chief Rodriguez from McAllen was our police chief. This one um, is on the military highway, um, and it has all the offices and workspaces. The, the, one of the interesting things about this is that multi-purpose room is a command center. So during times of hurricanes, et cetera, those types of things, uh, all the equipment is all wired, ready to go uh, with the sally port uh, so that uh, in the case of emergency, they have a substation in that part of town. We also had, uh, if you can go to the next one, the, uh, you can barely see it in this one, but there's a blast wall because Eno Gas had a, had a substation that they had for, for their fuels, and we had to put a blast wall. I don't know exactly where your location is, but that's something that you might, you might have to consider. This is the a complex that we did for the city of Mission, and it has a fire department and a police uh, substation uh, on the military highway. And this, uh, the fire station was 6,300 square feet and cost uh, 983,000. The police station is uh, approximately 6,000 square feet and was 9.2 or 923, 923,000. Yeah. Here again, this was all set up for emergency uh, situations that they might have. Um, either one of the, if you, if you have the opportunity and you want to come see them, we'd certainly be glad to see them. The, uh, the other one that we did was a uh, police substation in the southwest area of Brownsville. Uh, it's, it's just the bare bones. And uh, it's, as Chief Rodriguez said, this is the one that we did on Military Highway is really one that's more up-to-date, more uh, current. 
you know, in the, in the field of architectural engineering, technical quality is effective. And I think the, what separates a superior firm from a good firm is the level of service. And one of the things that I hope you've noticed in our, in our submittal was the number of different projects that we've done for the same clients. And, you know, this, uh, it, if you would like to, you know, to meet or discuss with any of those, we'd certainly be glad to, to, the, to accommodate you. Because if we hadn't provided them with a quality product and a quality service, they certainly wouldn't have asked us back. Uh, you know, in summary, all the firms that you're interviewing are good firms. We feel that we can serve you best because we certainly know how to do a police substation. And we are familiar with the working conditions and the construction conditions here in San Juan. And I think in the past, in the projects that we have shown you, uh, our projects have been on time, within budget, and provide a great value. One other thing that's important is that we, that you may or may not have asked the other firms, is we have no pending litigation against us. Never have. In 40 years. Good to know. And if you have any questions, we certainly Definitely like to go ahead and open it up to the commission. Commissioner Suarez, do you have any questions? Okay. Commissioner uh, Ramirez. Yes, um, you mentioned two substations in Brownsville? Yes, sir. What are the square footage and the cost on those? The, uh, in Brownsville, <coughs> the one on the military highway is 8,000 square feet. And Say it that costs 8,000. 8, mm -hmm. And it costs $1.275 million. The uh, one on, in, <coughs> excuse me, on Southmost is a little bit smaller and costs uh, $1.1 million. Mayor Pro Tem, got uh, <clears throat> um, and so I, along the same lines of the substations, um, so obviously you had experience, which is one of the questions I've been asking of, of all the presenters today. Uh, on these two uh, that you, you mentioned, um, uh, and, and, and then I'll ask about others, but uh, about for how many uh, folks, uh, staff, uh, did you design these? These there was, um, I believe, in, in the southmost, there was a rotating staff about 20, 22. Uh, at the <coughs> military highway, it was about the same uh, number. Uh, in, in Mission, because it was a smaller facility, it was not um, probably, well, there's Eight, eight police vehicles there. Uh, and what they're doing right now in Brownsville is the multi-purpose room is also um, um, city court. So they have, I guess for those people that can't or can't get downtown, they're using this as a, an outsource uh, or an out, off location courthouse. <coughs> so municipal court is held in there also. This, this is a training room. Um, all of the different functions, the police functions, they'll have their training it's in this facility. We're currently doing the remodeling and, and renovation work for the Cameron County Courthouse. And one of the things that we're doing there in their multi-purpose room is we're making it a lecture room for up to 90 officers at one time. Uh, because this is multi-purpose and it was a command center, uh, it's, it's a little different, but certainly something to consider in your training that you have the different officers uh, to facilitate them, uh, and, you know, their instructions, their, their training, etc., is that type. We did this, uh, those originally at the, the Lucio building at TSTC, and, and we had two of those in there. Uh, it became such a, uh, a thing, a vogue, that in the new Sherryland High School, we have two lecture rooms, because it just helps facilitate the, you know, the instructional program. The other question um, is, um, do you all have experience uh, designing uh, buildings in a modular fashion uh, with master planning uh, to be able to, you know, have a standalone facility or standalone uh, substation, for example, and then be able to add on to that? dressing rooms to band hall, we're adding 
second class room to convert it finally into their second home. So, I mean, master planning like that, I'll say each of the high schools that we've done has been like that, even the complex in McAllen. One of the important considerations when you have that really comes into where ethos and Chanine come into play, and that's your central plant that you design is modular to the point that you can expand it and you know where to go. Master planning is really a function of y'all. Tell us what you want and what you plan to do so that we can provide that space for expansion. Because you have to design the building so that it can be expanded, and that's probably the most important is the structural aspect. The way you design the roof, the way it's going to be draining, et cetera, besides the civil portion of it. But once we get all your program, you know, normally when we do one of these buildings, what we're looking at is not what you need today, but what you think you're going to need at least five years down the road, possibly even ten. And so if you will think in terms of those with your police chief, et cetera, so that you can follow that train of thought and so that we can provide, because it's just not offices, et cetera. It's all the support stuff, all the technical stuff. It's, you know, the, help me, the computer room. The MDF room. MDF room. You know, all that has to be allowed to grow. You have to have space there. And all that, you know, the MDF rooms, there's a different air conditioning requirement for those. So, you know, if you're in a situation where you want to provide that multipurpose room, lecture room, command center, et cetera, in time of need, well, then that's fine. We can provide for all that. And if we're looking for additional staff, that's what we, the DPS station in Brownsville, the whole rear wall is metal stud so that in the future we knock it out and make it larger. That was the whole point of doing it that way. So, you know, if we have that, if we know what your program is, then we're in a situation where we can provide for it. Mr. Gadsden? How much involvement do you have with the, for instance, if we're, you're designing the substation, do you have with the chief, staff, the commission? That's, you're the client. But what I'm saying is how much, like as far as, do you meet with the client like on a daily basis, twice a week, as far as giving us reports? Commissioner, I am through San Juan four days out of the week. A lot of it depends on what your, I'll say the team, when people are available. So it may be meeting with the commissioner, meeting with the administrative staff one day, and then tweaking, I'll say, like in this, tweaking the administrative side of it. And then you get to the police side of it, and then it's like, okay, well, when can we sit down with the chief and discuss his needs? Each different department will sit down with them. And this is not a process, a one-step process. You know, we'll come up with a concept, we'll bounce it off you all, the police chief, his staff, then coming to you, and this is a two-way street. We're here to interpret what you need and what you want. It's not what we want. You know, your police staff is going to be living in this building 24 hours a day, and we have to accommodate our design for them. So, you know, it's, here again, it goes back to the programming. We need to find out or help you establish what you're going to need, when, and then we'll, because the master plan is really a concept that's, that you all originate. Here again, we're here to interpret what you want. What is the most distinct feature between a police station and a substation? Probably the holding facilities. When we did the DPS station, there's a holding cell, but you can't call it a holding cell because it throws you into a whole different set of requirements. And we got around that with Major Garza's blessing, and let's just say it's a storeroom. When we did the original FAR PD many, many years ago, we had to redo all the cells 
by the nature of their function. You know, and, and when you have holding cells that requires uh, toilets, urinals, and all that, that's why you really don't want one. You really want to be able to hold them and get them out. You don't want to have to hold them for an extended period of time. And I'm sure your chief probably understands that. In a uh, facility that you would design and you come up with costs based on the assessment and the needs, uh, you also provide all an assessment as to what it would take to um, have the building up and running for the, the length of the projection, be it oh, five yes. years or ten years. We, one of the things that, that they're very capable of doing is, <coughs> excuse me, is they commission the building. In other words, when we start up, all the building systems are all run they're all uh, tested to make sure that their performance is, is what it's supposed to be. And if we are fortunate enough and we do these everything right, there will be a performance standard as to how much this building will cost you to operate. We will, we will let, based on the energy consumption, we can tell you how much you're going to pay on a, on a monthly basis. And once the building is completed, we track the building for up to a year to two years to make sure that we're meeting that energy efficiency that we design. That's something we've done for our clients. And if a facility that we currently have is for 35, it's 3,500 square feet with eight holding cells, uh, approximately if, uh, what would you estimate would be a decent amount of people that that facility of that size would hold? Mm. 3,500 square feet? I mean, if you do that by, you know, estimation as to people uh, within a facility. Well, I mean, a lot of it depends on what you can get. Okay. I mean, obviously, if it's, if you need several or eight cells, then we know that it would be worth it. But if you said there are much cells that are available, then it's not the same as the design that's worth the money. Um, but a lot of it's going to depend on what other facilities or what other um, aspects of the space you have. Do you have enough to get people in? When we did, when we did the, I'm talking about offices and we, when we did the expansion of the, of the South Padre Island, we put in a, mm -hmm. a drunk tank, holding large holding cell, and we had problems with the number of, principally because it's spring break and that's when they get loaded up, and then we have to get them and move them out, and you know put them in the county jail. Because here again, you don't, you really. Uh, well, I don't know. That That's really a call for the police chief. But I wouldn't. When you have holding cells, it just enters into a whole different set of rules that you have to have. Very good. Um, thank you very much. I have no other questions. The answer would have been roughly 20. 20 people? I would, uh, here again, right, the offer, if you'd like to come visit either one of those, uh, I think it would be, even if, if you're not selected, at least you, you can talk to the people that work in it, and they'll tell you this is a good feature and this is not a good feature. This, I wish we could, you know, every time you build a building, you know, uh, take your own house, you can stop and think, says, gee, I wish I had done this, or gee, I wish I had done that. Well, th this is, you know, this is the opportunity for that sure. we can certainly provide you. Thank you very much. Appreciate Thank you. the presentation. Thank you. Next is Rafa Architects, R A F A Architects. Yes, you're right. It's a no. Thank you. It says Rafa on the.
Good evening. I want to preface by saying we've got uh, five minutes on your presentation. The commission has about five minutes in questions, just so that you know, and um, you can go ahead. Okay. Um, how are we operating the uh, flesh, right? Do you have something to, uh, uh, Ms. Ramirez will be the one to handle that. Yeah, we have that. Well, thank you, Mayor. Commissioners, good evening. Good evening. And, and uh, thank you. Thank you for giving ROFA, or Reich Ogden uh, Figueroa Alex, an opportunity to present to you tonight. I, I know you said five minutes, so I'm gonna, I'm, we're going to introduce ourselves, talk a little bit about ourselves, and then come in with the idea of, of uh, showing some of the examples that we have done. And to my left uh, is my partner, Mr. Figueroa. Mr. Figueroa is from Edinburgh, raised in Edinburgh, and he, uh, he's a graduate of Texas A&M, uh, and, and uh, getting his master's there, and has, uh, has come back, been in firm for 38 years. And since those 38 years that I've known him, Mr. Figueroa is, is, is a talented architect, and he's, he's very meticulous in managing, and he's the one that would take the lead on the project if selected. Uh, he would be the, there initially with, with the firm, and uh, to the completion of the project. My name is uh, Manuel Hinojosa, and I was raised in Alamo, next door to you. As a matter of fact, I'm a Dr. Mock baby. <laughs> <laughs> if you know Dr. Mock, that's probably going a little bit too, uh, a little back for me. But um, I graduated from uh, Pan American, and I went to school in Louisiana. Uh, the, uh, since then, I, starting with Luis, uh, I took a little leave for about 10 years and managed a couple of cities. Uh, managed San Benito and managed Port Isabel. And, 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 I, and I gotta say, that's a very valuable experience for me because, you know, when, you, when you're working with the cities and then designing at the same time, because we were able to design police stations at both cities. And, and, and as a matter of fact, I was talking to the, to the uh, uh, city manager or the, uh, the police chief today, and, and it seems like they've outgrown their facility. They have an 8,000 square foot facility and they have 25 police officers. Originally there was 12 when we first started. So you can see what happens in 25 years. And, and part of the long range planning is really important. The communication, the aspects of knowing how the departments work, how, the response times, all of these things, you have to, if you live them, you can, you can design them. And we had that opportunity. It's helped us in a lot of the work. ROFA's been, uh, is, is started by Zeb Reich, and, and it, uh, way before I was born, but that's been now 68 years. Our staff of 14, we have two offices, and one in McAllen and one in Hardigen. We have four registered architects in the firm. And that's, that really says a lot about a firm because we're capable of responding to a lot of the work. We have a team always ready to work on, on projects like this. And, I'll, and there's a picture of the offices at the bottom. Where this is the offices in McAllen. This is the way the four architects, I mean, the, the architects, the chart of how a project like this would, would be set up. As you can see, uh, we would be in a partnership with San Juan and, and different people would be assigned to different duties. And like I mentioned, uh, Mr. Figueroa would take, take on the main responsibility. Our range is wide. This is an example of uh, ROFA design and uh, it, the, uh, the South Padre Island Municipal Building, which, which actually features a, a public safety complex in there. Half of the building and the both, sto both stories will have the facility there. It has, it has five holding cells, a large holding cell. It has, you know, a court and it has also the chambers to conduct the meetings for the city on, on the right-hand side. So uh, uh, the, the, the site itself, the designing was always something that had to do with, with uh, planning a facility of that size. Of course, this is an $8 million project and uh, it, uh, it, it was, it, with that kind of a budget, a lot of things could happen. On the other side of the valley, uh, ROFA is, it was involved in the design of the public safety facility. And this, is, this is a, a uh, 74,000 square foot building. Uh, back then when it was built, it was, it was built for $4 million. But it has all the, uh, the operations of the police department. The strictly safety uh, with your sally port in the back, all your holding cells, it's, the offices, the administration is in the top level, but you, you have the functions of a public safety facility in a large city like, like McAllen. Again, they're, they're, lar they're large cities, but every facility has a, has 
a, uh, is different and has a way you go about it. As different cities throughout the valley, and we've been involved in half a dozen of them. So we're very familiar with, with, uh, with that kind of operation and how the police department works. As a matter of fact, again, uh, I, I was very fortunate to go to the police academy and learn how the, uh, uh, how the operation of, 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 a, of a, a policeman does and what he's responsible, the contact he has with the public, how he deals with, with uh, uh, the day-to-day the -day operations of a facility like this. And that was very helpful in, in, in uh, uh, designing projects. Uh, the McAllen City Hall, a, a, a major project that ROFA undertook uh, uh, several years ago. And, and one of the things about ROFA, this project is, is projects like, like in McAllen are ongoing projects for us. Uh, Zebrike, uh, 57, actually built a fire station. That's, that's almost 60 years ago. So the integrity of ROFA has been with the city of McAllen. They have hired us until even as of recently. Uh, ROFA has been, in, been involved in the designing of the uh, development uh, center in, in, uh, in McAllen. This is, uh, last year it was completed, it was a $1.8 million on, in the old city hall, by the way, and not the one I showed you uh, uh, prior. But this facility was, was, was another component of the city hall that was moved because the, uh, the planning department, the, the code, uh, the, the code department, the uh, engineering had gotten too big for the facility. They had another a place, and they felt as though that, that they could have a one-stop shop for anybody trying to develop. So it's another function of the city, and it goes to show how diversified ROFA has been in designing projects of this nature, uh, as well as, like I mentioned earlier, in, in smaller uh, communities like, like Portisville and, 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 uh, and Combs. Things, th there's, there's examples that, that fit the different cities and because they have their different char character, they really have their different culture. Uh, San Juan has a culture of his own, as, as we grew up in it, so we're part of that fabric and understand what it takes. Fire stations, uh, like I mentioned earlier, the Central Fire Station in, in, uh, uh, in 57 was just recently torn down because it, it, it already le reached a life cycle. Uh, there's another uh, facility, another fire station. Sure you have less than a minute. Okay, thank you, Mayor. And I'm just about finished. So, so we have, you know, the, this uh, the Hidalgo County offices. You can see a similar function. We're able to come back and and provide uh, the uh, necessary programming staffing that that was needed in order to uh, design the, something that would satisfy the, the county officials. But uh, it's really good to have Manuel back working with us. I mean, these are examples of some of the work. I think the fact that we've committed our practice to the Rio Grande Valley. We haven't gone out of the valley. We know that the, we know what it takes to perform here, and when we're out, we're not performing here in the valley. So, uh, we've dedicated our practice here, and uh, that's why we've been here this long. And uh, you know, we really we feel like uh, our experience here in the valley, uh, working with municipalities, especially in in, in uh, city halls and, and public safety and fire stations, is a value that we bring to you. Yeah. And of course, response is very important to you all. This is a response facility. A, a municipal building in the city it takes a special attention. It's not like doing a school. It's most architects do a schools around here, but facilities like this require that specialization. We have that experience. Appreciate that. Commissioner Suarez, do you have any questions? Commissioner Ramirez? No, ma'am. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Garza? I, I, uh, thank you, first of all, for, for presenting and being here with us today. Um, I'm specifically, uh, my question is going to be about your experience and, and reference to uh, designing or developing uh, building uh, substations. Uh, have, have you had experience particularly in building substations? Although, as you described the Port Isabel, um, you know, and, and of course because of the size of that community, that's their full-fledged police department, but, but for other communities that may serve you know, as a substation. But aside from that example, which which I think is a good one, Ned, do you have experience building? Well, we also work in Lepedia, the city of Lepedia, worked with their substation there. Uh, actually renovated the city hall and, and the station. And also over in, uh, in um, City of Port and, um, oh, and also at Couch. Yeah. And at Couch. Uh, and, 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 uh, one of the things that, I, and then I've asked all of the uh, other presenters as well, 
is is uh, your experience in building modularly. Uh, what I mean is to design a building um, that we know uh, will be a standalone operational building, but that we'll be able to build on, you know, maybe for example, uh, 10,000 square feet, ultimately uh, be able to build it out, you know, 20, 30,000 square feet. Always planning for future expansions. Uh, the longevity of the building is maybe a building like this is maybe 50 years, uh, but through that I'm in 50 years, but 50, that, five zero? 50 mm -hmm. five zero, but through that time there's additions to it. And uh, like we mentioned, the essential fire station in the cabin, you know, that was there for all those years. That was like the only thing at one time. And there's seven stations now, and, and uh, but uh, finally it's lived its life, and you know. It, it doesn't fit in the, in the part of the city anymore. So those kind of things we are always have to take care of. Not only for this type of facility, and really it's very rare to get the opportunity to build city halls or, or even fire stations or public safety buildings because you know, those don't come around. <coughs> Elementary schools <coughs> come all the time. These kind of facilities don't. So there's not a lot of people that have experience in this. <coughs> you know, but uh, yeah, it's, it's important to know what we're, what we're doing and, and, and to understand the language that the user has as well. Commissioner Garcia, do you have any questions? Uh, no, ma'am. You know that we have an assessment already that we have invested in that's been made of the needs. You're able to, to work with somebody else's assessment. Evaluate the needs, uh, whatever you have, and uh, be able to give you our professional experience to make any modifications that we may have to make. Good. Um, in presenting your final uh, an analysis as to the cost, do you also provide the assessment as to what it would take to um, keep this building running from year to year as far as fixed costs. About uh, life cycle costing, maybe uh, we could work that kind of uh, of a of, of analysis with, once we have consultants, uh, engineering consultants involved. Yes, ma'am. When you, what do you believe to be the most important uh, feature in a public safety building? Safety of the, of, for example, the inmates. I mean. They, they're, even though they may be doing the crime or whatever, their safety in that building, they're staying in the building when a lot of people are moving in and out of the building. So that their safety is very important as well. There's a lot of components. I mean, it's, it's a special building. And you, I think, I think you believe you spoke about this uh, right at the uh, beginning of your presentation. <laughs> but if you're building a building today, how far into the future for expansion? would you look at and how would you make the analysis as to how big this building should be? I think it's going to depend uh, taking kind of, kind of the demographic information from the city to find out see what the growth patterns have been. Uh, typically, you, know, you, don't want to spend, you don't want to overspend. Uh, you don't ever over want to overspend, but you want to be able to have the major common <coughs> facilities for that growth. You've got to have, uh, you, know, you, don't want to, you, don't want, uh, you don't want to undersize those components. You're growing at a very fast rate. Correct. In the last, yeah. last 10 years, I think 30% of the population has increased. So you can almost, you almost have to design that way for the future, too. Very good. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Naismith Engineering. Good evening. And thank you for your patience. Just to let you know, we are uh, allowing five minutes with the uh, actual presentation. And I say five minutes for questions. It's taking a little bit longer when the questions get uh, to be a bit more extensive. So you'll be given the same opportunity as well. So five minutes. Thank you. Good evening, Commissioner, city staff, 
Thank you for the opportunity to introduce ourselves. My name is Ricky Pineda. I am a native of the Valley. I was born in Matamoros and raised in Brownsville. I uh, received my civil engineering degree from Texas A&M Kingsville. Since I have been with Naismith, I've had the opportunity to work with projects for the city of Los Frenos, the city of Los Indios, and Brownsville. Naismith has been serving South Texas in both public and private both the public and private sector for over 60 years. We are a full service, multidisciplinary firm providing consulting expertise in the area of engineering, environmental, surveying, and architecture. We have offices in Austin, Corpus Christi, and Brownsville. With that said, I'd like to introduce Anna Smith, our project manager for the Brownsville office. Mayor, commissioners, city staff. I'm Anna Smith. I am in charge of Naismith's Valley Operations from the Brownsville, Texas office. I have worked in the Valley for the past 16 years. I have two daughters who graduated from SciTech in Mercedes. Uh, we have been fortunate to have been, uh, for the last 10 years, the city engineer for Los Fresnos. Some of our other uh, clients in the Valley include a long-term client, the city of Thor, uh, the microphone a little closer to oh, you. I'm so sorry. Can y'all hear me better now? That's much yes. better. Okay. Uh, again, city engineer for Los Fresnos for the last 10 years. Long-term client is the city of Far. Some of our other clients in the valley include Willacy County, uh, city of Los Fresnos, the city of Los Indios, uh, and city of La Grulla. Uh, one of the things that makes us unique in the valley is that under one roof, under, with one company, we have civil engineers, structural engineers, environmental scientists, and architects. Uh, and we find this, this has been a very efficient way to do projects. Uh, a lot of the, the projects we've done so far in the Valley are public works projects for cities and counties. I'd like to introduce Mr. Grant Jackson, who is one of the vice presidents of Naismith Engineering, who will tell you about our specific uh, architectural services that we offer and uh, about some projects that are relevant to your proposed project here. Thank you for the opportunity to be here this evening. Um, I know you've never seen me before, but I know that you're glad to see me because we're the last group. <laughs> and you're probably tired of this, so we'll try to keep this of moving along and keep it as brief as possible. I know you've heard a lot of presentations tonight. Uh, in your uh, proposal packages, we describe a number of projects uh, that we've performed that we think are very relevant to the project that you're considering. Uh, but one of the things that we want to talk to you tonight specifically about, if you'll open the, the tan colored uh, packages that we just handed out, uh, there are three white sheets in there that have some uh, more detailed project descriptions. And I apologize, I'm not an architect. Our uh, architectural department uh, head was not able to be here tonight. Uh, he had a conflict, so I'm filling in for him. But I, uh, I work with our architecture group on a regular basis and, and do a lot of uh, work with them and oversee a lot of the projects that, in which they're involved. Uh, one project that we'd like to talk to you about briefly is the Emergency Operations Center that we've uh, completed recently for the city of Del Rio. Uh, I brought with me tonight, if you're interested in taking a look at those, a copy of the construction documents that we completed for that emergency operations center for the city, uh, city of Del Rio. You want to bring uh, that forward? Okay. And one of the unique things about this is uh, we did have to, uh, for that particular project, follow the FEMA 361 guidelines, and you've probably heard several people talk about those. I won't spend a lot of time uh, dwelling on those because you've probably heard more than you want to about that. But one of the things that's significant about those is the structural detailing and the structural uh, requirements for the buildings to meet that FEMA standard. It's a little more robust than some of the other industry standards that are out there uh, for community safe rooms, and that's the specific title that FEMA assigns to that. Uh, but one of the challenges that we had in Del Rio was getting the uh, construction to conform to the FEMA standard. Uh, un unfortunately, uh, the contractor that performed the work 
uh, wound up having to actually take a section of uh, CMU wall out uh, to replace it to be able to meet the FEMA standards. So uh, we're very familiar with those standards and our engineers and construction inspection personnel uh, have some pretty good experience making sure that the facilities actually get constructed to meet that. What's the square footage of this? Uh, the square footage of that, uh, I, you know, I did not write that down. 3,260 square feet. 3,260 3, square feet. Um, but the, the challenges in getting those things built, uh, a lot of times people will focus on the architectural uh, exterior of the building. But when you're in that building, and you need to use it, you're not really going to care what it looks like. What you're going to care about is that it will withstand the weather conditions that you're experiencing at the time, that you'll be able to maintain power and communications, and those are the critical issues for the type of structure that you're talking about. And, and sometimes uh, facilities like this may get uh, skewed towards uh, form and how they look, but we think one of the most important aspects of a facility such as you're considering is the function that it will have to uh, carry out in a, in a pretty cr critical time when there are other resources that you can't really count on. And so have solid construction inspection, uh, making sure that you have appropriate structural design and inspection of that as it's in construction, making sure that you have the communications trades coordinated uh, because another critical function to a facility such as this is going to be your power and communications. Uh, if those are not working during your emergency, uh, the facility is not going to serve its function. And so one of the things that, that we feel strongly about is the need to integrate all of those elements into the architecture. And so there are several engineering elements that need to get integrated with the architecture because we have architects and engineers working together under the same chain of command, we can integrate those things much more easily. Uh, we think we have a good track record of doing that. i uh, highlight for you a couple of projects very quickly. Uh, we're currently in the design for a new city hall for the city of Orange Grove. Uh, that's about uh, 45 miles uh, northwest of Corpus Christi. And uh, there's some information in there on the design for that. One of the elements of that is a community safe room that does not quite meet the requirements of FEMA. They just, from their funding that they had available, it would not meet the FEMA requirements. But many of the same design elements are, are included in that project. We are also in the process of doing a design for the Flower Bluff uh, Fire Department uh, to upgrade one of their facilities again. It will be modeled after the community safe room uh, standards, although it may not meet the FEMA 361 standard. But uh, we do have considerable experience uh, within our engineering and architecture group doing facilities such as the one that you're contemplating. And we would welcome the opportunity to assist the city of San Juan with their facility. So we'd be happy to uh, answer any questions that you have. I think I may be real close to my five minutes. Yes, sir, you are. Uh, and thank you for that. I'd like to go ahead and open it up for the questions from the uh, commission. Commissioner Suarez, do you have any questions? Commissioner Ramirez? No, ma'am. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Garza. <clears throat> First of all, thank you all for uh, being the last ones. Uh, I know that, that was a, a little rough on you all, but, but we appreciate you uh, giving the time to, to come and present to us. Uh, one of the things that and, and I, I'm, uh, I've been asking all of the others uh, prior to you is about uh, specific experience in building substations, particularly police substations. Uh, your experience in, in designing and building police substations? Police substations? Yeah. Um, again, I'm, I'm not sure that specifically we've had, uh, it's been a little while, probably four or five years since we've actually done a police substation. Uh, most of our work has been with emergency services districts, uh, other types of city departments, a number of fire departments. Uh, we've done several fire stations and things like that. You know, and, and in looking at some of the designs that you have, uh, you know, on here, I think th the basic idea would be the same uh, with, I guess, uh, um, uh, the obvious being more of the security and the uh, controlled access and things of that nature, uh, which you would probably need to have, uh, you know, a consultant or uh, probably, um, you know, in, in communication and, and with direction from our own police department. And th those are somewhat specialized disciplines. 
probably the most recent project that we've worked on, uh, and I've, I apologize, I, I should know this better off the top of my head, is probably 2003, 2004. Uh, we did some work at the Nueces County Jail uh, in, in Corpus Christi where we had to address several of the, the security elements. Obviously, that's a uh, housed federal prisoners, so there were some special uh, security requirements there. That's probably the, the closest and most recent security experience that we have, but we have done that in the past. And the other question that I, that I was asking uh, the others, and, and I'm kind of seeing uh, in the way that these three examples are built, um, um, kind of fits what my question is, and that is, do you have experience building, you know, modularly, which is to say, uh, you could build uh, a standalone operational building uh, that we can then uh, additionally add, uh, you know, more square footage. So, for example, we could start off with a 10,000 square foot uh, facility um, and then be able to build that to 20 or 30,000 um, and so on. And so, um, aside from these particular examples that I have, which I think really address that, you know, are there, is there others uh, where you've built in that, in that uh, particular there, there have been a number that we've done uh, as, as modular units or expansions. One of the things about the Del Rio facility uh, was that the, the part that we added on, we, we took an existing city facility that was something else, I, I, can't, I think it was a warehouse or something, but we repurposed that facility and made additions to that facility that resulted in the emergency operations center uh, being involved. So we are familiar with doing work where you take uh, a piece and then expand it to have a completed facility. We've done a number of projects uh, like that. We've done also a, a number of, uh, uh, we did a, a couple of fire stations where that uh, was the, the same type of design. It was a modular design where there could be additional bays added on uh, for future expansion. And, and, and this is something just because I'm looking at your new, uh, your design for the new city hall uh, for Orange Grove, and, and that you're using ICF construction, which I, I'm sorry, what? ICF construction, yes, sir, uh, which we've been um, uh, in, in my experience, and we've been building homes uh, using ICF construction in the area. Uh, in fact, we built an entire neighborhood of ICF homes. What, what uh, in this particular uh, Orange Grove uh, building, what exterior are you using? It was I didn't mention here. Uh, for for this one, it uh, the Party Orange planks. Grove would would have been a uh, that's a CMU uh, so you exterior. So it exposed the CMU. Yes, exposed. So you didn't like, for example, in in our applications here, we've done the ICF construction and then used hardy plank on the I, exterior. There there are a number of different exterior claddings. Uh, we we've actually done one where there was a, a metal. We put a metal cladding outside the ICF. Uh, but on this one, it was uh, just for the, the durability and, and the cost. It was a, a, a split face CMU on the, the exterior. And I don't want to steal <laughs> a question that I know that the mayor will be asking, but in your experience, particularly in working with ICF, um, can you, can you uh, tell us a little bit about um, cost savings on operations on the operations? Well, obviously, one of your your bigger costs for any the operation of any facility like that is going to be your heating and cooling, and that's one of the big benefits of the ICF is your thermal envelope uh, that you have. You have significantly improved thermal envelope performance across the uh, building envelope just because of the ICF and what it provides in terms of the the type of construction, the R values, and things like that. So. Uh, we've experienced uh, significant cost savings. Another thing that, that happens, uh, particularly with an emergency operations center, uh, that you don't really think about, but one of the things you try to do is you try to avoid outside distractions. Uh, you know, if you're in there and there's a you know, high wind and you got stuff blowing by the windows and you may be hitting the side of the building, another benefit to that is the, the sound insulation because uh, it, it, it follows somewhat with the R value of the insulation the, the sound deadening capability. So that's kind of another side benefit. But probably the biggest operational improvement is the thermal performance and the, the heating and cooling and, and the building is able to be uh, made to, to be in a little more steady state long term. Commissioner Garza, any no, questions? No, ma'am. Thank you. If you're, uh, you, we talk, you talked a little bit uh, briefly as to 
looking into the future for the time that you built. Um, and if you're looking at that, what are you doing to assess at what rate, at what, how long, how much you would build out and how long into the, or how far into the future would you be looking at as you make a recommendation for the size of facility we would need? Well, almost always in, a, in our experience that uh, the time projection is based on, or, or what you actually build is based on the money that you have available. Uh, it's un unfortunate, but uh, most of the time, facilities like this are are built with a combination of, of grant funds and local funds, and you know when that funding limit hits, even though you'd like to build more and have more capacity for the future, uh, you're limited on what you actually build by the funds that you have. Most of the time, uh, we look at at some of these municipal facilities at having a 20 to 30 year design life. Uh, sometimes even longer than that. Uh, we've actually done a couple of facilities with a 50 year design life. Most of the time if you get uh, anything beyond uh, a 20 year design life you're, you're building so much additional capacity that you have to number one pay for up front, number two uh, heat and cool and then number three maintain uh, over a long period of time that at, at some point the, the economic projections on that don't look quite as favorable going out a long way uh, and building a lot of additional capacity out ahead of yourself. On the average, on the average, if, if let's say you come to that position where this is the only money you got, and we're looking at the needs of the existing personnel, um, that would be a very um, important feature to sit down and talk about what you're about to invest in. A absolutely, and, mm -hmm. and and one of the things that always is appropriate to do with a facility such as this is to do. Uh, kind of the, the conceptual design and look at those architectural elements that ha how is this going to house your existing personnel, how are they going to, how is their workflow going to go together with w the functions and tasks that they're doing inside this, this space and how can you make the best utilization of that. Almost always we get into value engineering situations where there might be uh, a construction feature such as maybe the ICF that we talked about uh, that maybe needs to be based on your available budget value engineered down to uh, maybe maybe reinforced CMU or something that would meet the structural requirements but not be uh, quite as, as uh, capital cost intensive. So there are a lot of those types of things that really need to be addressed at the conceptual design stage that, that need to be worked out before you move to uh, construction documents because that's the point at which you'll begin to uh, assess hard costs and, and uh, you'll kind of commit to a specific budget once you move to the construction documents. We've already had an assessment made of, the, of what the needs would be. Yes, ma'am. Uh, you would be able to work with that, is that? Absolutely. Okay. And um, my final question, as you look at uh, the final presentation, as to what the cost would be, and also would you do an assessment as to um, what it would take for the city to be able to maintain that building up and running um, as far as the fixed cost? And, you, and now you mentioned another feature. You would be able to make the comparison to go to conventional or something different. Is that right, it? and that's, that's obviously one of the important things about any um, you know, community facility that you have is not only what is this thing going to cost me today, but what am I going to be paying for tomorrow? And having some projections on uh, power usage, you know, which is it, in our part of the world is probably a big uh, recurring cost is your electric power to cool the building uh, and, and some of your other power needs. So that's an important element to look at as well as your normal maintenance. Of course, that's going to be tied to what you construct. Some of the things that you can construct require much less maintenance than other things. So that, that would certainly be a, a part of the overall uh, deliverable that we would anticipate for a project is to give you some idea of here's what we think this thing would cost to operate. Thank you very much. Okay, you're welcome. With that being said, we've had an opportunity to uh, listen to, we also have um, the warden group who is still not here. But they did provide a um, a pamphlet or a uh, recommendation. Um, I, don't, I don't even know what it's called this anymore. Um, their specifics of, as to what they've done in the past and what they um, experiences they have. So, at, in the same token, we want to make sure that because they have submitted 
that also they're taken into consideration. Are there any questions as to what was submitted by any member of the commission as, as to the Warren Group? Anybody? Okay. What I'd like to do at this time then, we've had an opportunity to listen to um, at least nine, eight of the nine firms that have submitted. And I'd like to go ahead and have a discussion as to some uh, nominations and recommendations based on the information that we received um, to who would uh, we feel we'd like to pursue a contract or um, and continue working with them. And I, I do want to start that. Um, there is uh, several, I, th I think one thing that I'm very impressed is the, the experience of uh, many of those that have come before us um, and their ability to articulate what are the, uh, as, as to them, what are the important features and what are the things that we must take into consideration. Um, I believe there's, there's three that stand in my, in my mind that I would consider. Um, I know he said it's like Konak, but it's uh, Gisnac, G-I-Z-N-A-C. Um, what I really liked about them is they're a full uh, operation they have in-house. Um, the range of uh, buildings which they have designed and the amount of experience and what they have in-house, I think that's extremely important. They had their local um, people available uh, and they showed many of the architectural buildings that we see here in the valley. Um, I also in, thought that we had a, a very good presentation by the uh, gentleman Amata and Garcia. He was very uh, practical, very, um, his approach very uh, forward and very simple in the sense of uh, these are the things that we, we need to look into uh, assess. I didn't get a sense of, of uh, how many people I remember were in that, but I did like his approach. He, he was very um, matter of factly, and I think he had enough experience. And then the final one that I enjoyed was the uh, GMS architect. Uh, I think he ex he showed a lot of experience and a lot of knowledge, and so those are the three that I'd like to propose for us to to look at. Mayor, again, uh, I, I I would like to echo uh, some of that in that I I think we've got um, a a tough decision to make because we had uh, so many um, uh, I think uh, qualified individuals that have the experience. I think that I would like to see personally uh, in an architect as we design um, uh, what we're ultimately going to do uh, by way of, a, of a, you know, a public safety um, substation. Um, and, and I think that uh, in my mind, a few, stu a few uh, stood out. Um, I, I really was impressed uh, by the experience uh, that is currently going on uh, with PBK uh, I've actually had the opportunity to tour the Progreso PD, uh, which I think is something that, um, considering their limited resources uh, and how well they were able to really meet the needs of that community uh, with, with such limited resources, uh, I think PBK did a great job. I have not had an opportunity to see the STC uh, facility, which, which I think um, I will um, eventually because I think um, from what they were explaining uh, was really, really good. Um, I also uh, was really impressed with the experience that uh, ROFA had, um, particularly when they were mentioning that you know, they've built buildings that have not only uh, uh, been successful in their use, uh, but have, you know, I think you mentioned the, far, the uh, fire station in Callan was over 60 years old uh, and still operational. I think that goes a long way um, to not only how they design, but but uh, but for the purpose of design and the durability of the building, which I think is going to be important uh, to to us and what we expect out of uh, out of our building. Uh, and then uh, I I would agree with you that uh, Mr. Uh, and again I, I I'm not sure I don't remember how to pronounce it, but uh, oh, uh, get, get, yeah. Cognac, right? Uh, G Gignac, I think. Gignac. Uh, okay. I also felt that uh, uh, they had uh, um, uh, several examples um, of what we're looking at, and definitely showed experience uh, in being able to provide um, uh, our city what we're looking for um, in by way of, of of this project. So um, I'd like to to in that order 
PBK1, ROFA2, and uh, GIGNAC3. Any other recommendations? Uh, on my top of the list, I like uh, the GMS architect from me, Brownsville, just for the simple reason that they uh, been here practicing since 1976 for a long time. They showed some tremendous uh, uh, work, just like everyone else uh, that's come through uh, this evening. Uh, but that would probably be my number one uh, pick right now. And then I also like uh, PBK as well. And uh, what is it, Gignac again? I guess. <laughs> is that how you pronounce it? Yeah. yeah. So those were probably those, those are my three uh, top ones that, that okay. I, I feel that, you know, like every, I mean, these firms were, were excellent. You know, I give them credit for for the type of work they do, because not anybody can do this type of work. It, it takes a lot, you know, a lot of knowledge. So, uh, yes, those are my top three mayors that I, Thank I you. feel. Any other member of the commission? I think we had a very good uh, people out there, eight, eight of them, and I think uh, PBK will be my number one. And then uh, Geeknack. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Ropa. You know, they all did real good. You know, I think uh, whichever one we pick, it will be a good selection. Thank you. Ramirez? I also had PBK, GIGNAC, and MGS. Thank you. And what I'd like to do is um, there's one that everyone seems to uh, include as um, as a choice that is made up the list there's one that made it four so um i like to know there's a a motion for giznak to um be given the contract yes yeah we can That's very i'm very good. comfortable with that too yeah okay Well, I guess who would be one is, as I'm, I'm asking, I, guess I would like to take one by one yeah. for the first one. And I'd like uh, to make a motion uh, to uh, select PBK. Second. All in favor state aye. Aye. Second. Is there a motion for Giznak? I'll, I'll, I'll make that motion for you. Okay. You, you went, what she said. <laughs> yes. Is there a second? Second. All in favor state aye. 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 And uh, a motion for the third? I'd like to uh, make a motion to select Rofa to be our third candidate. Is there a second? Second. All in favor state aye. Aye. Then what we will do is um, approach uh, according to the uh, recommendations, being PBK first, Giznak second, and Rofa third, based on what the um, I guess the outcome would be. And um, Mr. Uh, Chief, would, would be the one to approach you? would. Yes, uh, we will, Mayor. Tomorrow we'll contact you. Okay. Authorize him to do that since we split that up. All right. Is there a motion to authorize the Chief to approach the first um, candidate being uh, PBK? So moved. Is there a second? All in favor state aye. Aye. Motion passes. Alrighty. Uh, council, um, so if, if uh, that's not uh, successful, then we'd have to come back and authorize him to do uh, number two. Great. Moving on, under B, consider the uh, authorizing interim city manager to enter into an agreement with a for phone payments with payments from Charlotte, North Carolina, and to no cost to the city. Mr. Baca. Good evening. <clears throat> I'm bringing this project forward to uh, provide the citizens with another means uh, to pay their uh, water bills. Uh, we currently have uh, online payments and this is going to be over the phone payments. Uh, I previously brought this uh, <coughs> in a presentation and uh, the problem was that the agreement was for five years. Uh, I was able to push it down to two years 
Um, so the company for now agreed on two years agreement at no cost uh, to the city. So I'm coming forward to get your approval if there is any question. Oh, I, I do have a question with, and, and, and council please stop me if, if, I'm not, if this is not pertinent and, and I can ask this at another time, but do you have a sense, Mr. Baca, of how successful um, our online uh, has been? And I'll tell you, I, I use the online exclusively yes. to do my, my water payment. And I know that it's broken down. It tells you, you know, this is your water payment, and then you're paying an additional uh, fee for the for the use. So is that generated revenue? And 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 have you found some success? And the only reason I ask that question is because, I mean, you know, maybe if that's not been quite as successful, then this is an option uh, that that we definitely need to consider. And if not, maybe maybe not. And that that won't specifically determine my, my decision on this, but I just kind of want to have a sense for it, and I don't know if that's something that we can, you know, have them address under this agenda item. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> the online payments, we started the, the first month uh, with around 150 and uh, <clears throat> we've been for, uh, it's been going on for almost a year and a few months now, maybe two, three months. Uh, we've gone up to, and it's been a steady uh, climb, basically, and we're up to <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's a steady climb, and we're up to 750 payments online wow. every month. Uh, we there's a two dollar fee uh, on this. We generate 75 cents out of the two dollars, and 125 goes to the company. Um, this uh, is 175 cents on the citizen, so they'll be saving 25 cents on each payment. And but no money goes to the city. Basically, uh, it's at no cost. The city doesn't pay anything, but we don't get anything. The company that handles all the payments gets uh, uh, the payments, uh, the fees. I'm sorry. Um, we did an online survey to to check how many people are interested in paying over the phone, and we we got uh, 200 around 260 or 70 people saying that they would like to pay over the phone. Uh, so these are my my numbers basically. The, actually, the survey is still up online on the homepage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Baca, I yeah. have a question because I, I had issued, we've been dealing with this for a couple of months and yes. I had issued letters and I I don't see some of the issues that I requested on here when I spoke to Ms. Gonzalez about this. Um, there is an extra fee, correct? If, if you go over a certain amount a month, there will be an additional payment by the client, which means the city of 3.5%, correct? N no, the 5% the <coughs> the is a buffer that we have, whether the payment, uh, the five percent buffer is on the average of the bills that we have. So we average the bills that we uh, that the citizens get of last year, and the average was, I think, close to sixty-eight dollars of all the bills for the whole year. <clears throat> they base the dollar seventy-five cents based on that average. So we have a five percent buffer on that average. If the f if that average goes above five percent, then the dollar seventy-five percent changes, but not automatically. It has to go through another agreement. If it goes down 5%, I'm sorry, beyond the 5%, also the $1.75 will go down. Uh, but this doesn't go into effect automatically. We have to sign an alternative agreement only next year, and that goes to the fact that the city, I'm sorry, the company has to get another average next year based on this year. So. But but still the 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 five percent buffer when it changes we don't get the pay the the fee the dollar seventy five cents fee changes not the city doesn't pay anything so the city pay. no the, yes that that's based on the on the on the the whole average of uh, the full year so this cannot even change until next year. So next year we, we go back and visit the average and see if it changes. And based on that, uh, we'll bring it forward. I do see that the, the prior, with prior written notice to the client, if such change is required. So I guess that's what that's you're saying. That's true, yes. It has, to be, it has to be written first. OK. Um, the other issue I had with this was the venue. Our venue statutes say if they're going to sue us, it's mandatory here for a contract for a city. Yeah. However, if we decide to sue them, and I don't know what, why we would well, sue them, if there's really no cost to the city, as you say, but 
that venue could be, uh, where are they located? In um, <coughs> Charlotte, North Carolina. Yes, but we did change the venue on a, on a previous notice. I'm not sure if uh, I sent you a wrong contract, but the venue has been changed to Texas. So it's not venue, it's actually the governing law. So the, okay. the, the definition of, of the law or the law we'll be following would be the, the laws of the state of Texas. I know their response was already done that by adding this, but okay. that just tells us we're going to interpret it based on the laws in Texas, and not North not Carolina. Not over there. The venue yeah. for litigation would be, you know, in we're going to sue. Whatever happens, the lawsuit will be here in Hidalgo County, whether it's federal or, or the courthouse here. The, the is this county. an arbitration? There is no arbitration here. No, we didn't have that. We can visit w uh, with them on that if, if there's a possibility to change it. Okay. And their response was, well, we've already changed it. And I said, no, you didn't. You just said our, we'll interpret the laws based on I guess they changed just the venue because the venue was also different. Okay. It wasn't in Texas. Okay, well then at maybe that you, point. I don't have the correct contract because I'm looking at the one that was in the package. I don't okay. see venue here in Texas. Unless I didn't get it, but I, I don't see it here. Also, I had requested a non-appropriation clause that if, because this, well, before it was for four, now that it's for two, uh, the appropriation clause just indicates that we're going to go beyond this fiscal year, and we're not supposed to do that. Technically, we can't do that, and uh, we've had this conversation with Ms. Gonzalez, and the way we can take care of that is by putting this non-appropriation clause language in there, which says that if we don't have the funds, then the city would have the option to terminate the contract. Now, again... I mean, there's not a big money issue here, yeah. but I mean, we no, need to put that in. I, I think those have been changed, but for some reason, th this has been sent to me lately when they changed from five years to two years. I guess the things that we changed on the first contract, which I have already sent to you, uh, probably weren't reflected in this contract that they sent me when they changed to two years. But I'm sure we can get the, the one that uh, we can apply the two years on the contract that uh, based on your changes. So I guess we have to look back and so just do it contingent that those uh, items be addressed. items be the address and if for some reason it falls through it then we can get approved okay. so that we can take action tonight items <coughs> from the city commission uh, we took care of the indemnity language and of course we have to the fullest extent permitted by law we would have to indemnify them and that takes care of us because we cannot indemnify anybody but it takes care of it but it says there if they're negligent, then we have to, I mean, if we're negligent, then we have to indemnify them, which again, we wouldn't get to that point anyway, but there's also material breach by us, then we have to indemnify them. And I had asked that they remove that, but that's just for your consideration. And by well, law, I, we can't indemnify them anyway. Yeah, I, what, I, what, I would, what I would say is that if, if all of those are met, then we could go ahead and approve it, contingent all of those uh, changes being approved. I mean, I think if the, if the spirit of this changes to cost, then we have to come back and take a look at it, but it's free. No, yeah, and I think that the company has been to be as flexible as possible because it's completely free for the city. And that's why they had the five-year agreement at the beginning, because the city is not going to be paying anything. But uh, I mean, we can address those issues and try to change them. I think they're flexible enough to do that, yeah. They, would, they did it on the other one. Yes, they would. So. That's what they explained to me the last time. They said, this is the reason we need so much time. It's just the preparation for it, yeah, the, the initial preparation for it. Uh, well, they, they, they take care of all the configuration and the handling the phone calls and everything, so we don't get the phone calls into our system and anything at all. Everything goes through them. Even the payment processing over the phone system, it's not our phone system, it's their phone system. Uh, Mr. Rucka, how are we going to be promoting this uh, this? service the same way we promoted the, the online payments we're going to do it uh, on the website on social media and uh, all the possible the news that we have can, can we send that on the bill itself yes of course Cause I know on the on the bill it says you know you can pay but online yes. so maybe we had to, we'll put it there permanently phone. yeah uh, I uh, uh, if, if nobody else has anything I, I'll make a motion to approve uh, contingent final approval by legal counsel and the uh, issues that he's uh, discussed tonight. Is there a second? Second. All in favor state aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Baca.
See, consider approval and consent that the Vasquez Law Firm doing business as Gilbert Vasquez or an attorney associated with the aforementioned lawyer law firm for 